Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 76 of the Clockwork Cantina podcast. I am one of your hosts, Josh902, and this is our other host. I'm DT3. What's up, guys? What's what up? is up, everyone? Let me turn Daniel up a little bit for you guys. I know sometimes he's quiet when we do the direct calls for some reason. Uh, and I forgot to do it before we went live. Uh, so we'll do it. Or we'll do it live now. Completely live. Like the meme. Um, hello, everyone. How are you doing? Hope you're all doing well. Uh, episode 76. We have a, a nice little show for you guys today. It's a retro rewind episode where we watched uh it was daniel's pick he picked von ryan's express i've either saw it as a kid and don't remember it or i've seen it for the very first time so um i actually asked my dad a minute ago daniel like a little bit before we started like had he seen this movie and he's like mm -hmm. with frank sinatra yes yeah. i have so my old man's nice. seen this movie there you go, um man. but i i hadn't seen it i don't or at least i don't remember having seen it growing up so yeah i uh it's been a while for me too that's kind of one of the reasons why I, I was like wanted to pick it for this because it's like I, it's been a while dude like i know i've seen it but it definitely like years ago so which i find myself doing that a lot lately just re-watching a lot of movies that i haven't seen in years like we'll talk about here some of the ones that that i that we that i watched uh in the you know what we've done for the past week thing but mm -hmm. uh yeah it's it's uh yeah, I'm curious to to hear what you what you what you think about this one. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing we got coming up is E3 and the Summer Games Fest. All this stuff a is lot, coming up. It's happening this week. A lot man. of gaming stuff, man. A lot of gaming stuff coming. Um, up here. and I was watching somebody before we went live uh, go over their kind of news and stuff, and they were like, "Yeah, we should probably temper our expectations because we with COVID and everything, there may not be a lot of huge surprises, uh, but I hope there's still a few." And I, I still want to be really excited for it um, because it's always fun. And I always love, I love gaming. I love games. I love playing games. I love playing games with friends. And I just hope there's some exciting announcements, even if there's not like, even if it's probably going to be a dry little bit. Also, because we're at a new console cycle as well. Um, uh, but it'll be an interesting uh, week. We know we're going to get a Battlefield announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, thing on what is it Thursday or something like that, and I'm actually kind of interested in this Thursday or Wednesday. I can't remember which day it is. Um, I'm kind of interested Thursday. in that. I haven't I haven't gotten a Battlefield in a while, but we can talk about that stuff we'll, in the news. Yeah, the last yeah 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 well yeah the, yeah yeah okay yeah um uh but yeah before we get started uh, let us talk about what we've been up to the past week. That's usually how we start these shows off. What have we been up to the past week? So, Daniel, if you want to start us off with what you've been up to this past week, let us know. All right. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, what have I been up to the past week? Um, <clears throat> I have been, uh, like I said, watching some movies that I haven't seen in a hot minute. Like, for example, I rewatched um, both Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and Treasure Planet, you know, the two Disney movies from like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I rewatched both of those movies for the first time in a long time, and let me tell you, they're great. Especially Atlantis. That movie is like Atlantis awesome. is a classic, bro. That movie I is, that one movie of my is Awesome. Still to this day, twenty years later, it's fucking awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was really really good. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. So I Treasure Planet also was pretty neat. Um, I forgot that there was a moment or like a portion of the movie where they literally just play a song and you're like well, okay they're literally <laughs> just playing this like song and it's this it kind of looks like a music video right now but yeah, okay um <laughs> so that kind of i kind of forgot about that a little bit um but yeah i don't know i it, it i still enjoyed that one as well but i think atlantis is the better movie of the two um what else uh besides that more more nba playoffs uh unfortunately my team is out but i'm still a fan of the sport so i'm still watching to see what happens because there's a bunch of teams <clears throat> currently in the playoffs who have never won and anything could happen to, uh, to speak so on on the love of the sport and like when your team's out 
How exciting is it to get to watch the games when it's like there's nothing riding necessarily for you yeah, on it, right? Like, you're, 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 when your horse isn't in the race, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you it's, can kind of not yeah, stress out and have a stroke. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Because you can just watch and see what happens. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's whatever happens, happens. Like, I'm not, I, I ain't worried either one way or the other what happens, you know? But I, I'm, I'm, I, I, hopefully it's entertaining, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so I've been watching more more NBA playoffs. Um, <clears throat> obviously been watching the Bad Batch every week. Um, the last episode was pretty dope. Uh, we'll, we're we're definitely gonna do an episode on it once the whole season's over, and we'll talk about that because uh, you know you know you know we like our Star Wars here, so we'll definitely talk about that in the future. We sure do. Uh, play Overwatch the last week of the uh, anniversary event. Got my skins. I always do that every time that happens. Uh, I played more Apex. I think, you know, our game's just the, the go to, like, let's fucking mess around and, you know, whatever. Um, also, for the first time in a very long time, I played this game, this, this, this MMORPG that I used to play all the damn time. Uh, it was called Maple Story, and the reason why I hopped on again for the first time in a long time was I received an email from Nexon, which is the people who make the you know who, who whose whose game it is, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Yo, uh, you've been inactive for a very long time, so if you don't hop on before this date, we're gonna delete all your characters." I'm like. Hell no, you're not. I don't play this game. I don't play this game anymore. Nowhere near enough as a, like I don't play it at all anymore. I but I dude, there was a point in my life where like I used to play this shit like every day, bro. Like I I would I was on it like all the fucking time. Maple Story was life at one point for me, and like you know even though like it's 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 kind of weird because like it's one of those things where like. I don't play it now anymore, obviously, but, mm-hmm. and like, even if I were to play it, it's never going to be the same because like when you, when, when it's games like that, it just like the people that you used to play with and like all the, all the memories and stuff connected to that, like, it's, it's like, it's never going to be the same, right. To the way I used to play it, but still I have kind of that little bit of like, I don't want <clears throat> to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want this to be deleted forever, because you know maybe right, you know, yeah. it's it's cool to hop on every once in a while. Like like I went on. I forget what day it was. Like like yesterday or the day before. I just hopped on for like I don't know ten min like ten minutes or something just to see what was going on. And like obviously again, it's never gonna be the same as when you first played the game. But you know, I mean, it's I, I still want my characters and stuff. Like I I put in a lot of time. And unfortunately, money into that game. Uh, so yeah, man. Like I just, I was like, I, I, you know, I don't want my characters to be deleted. Let me hop on, see what's going on. So yeah, I, I, I have characters in a bunch of different servers, and you know, if anybody ever wants to play that, fucking, I, I, I that'd be, that'd be, that'd be fun. Because I, again, I, they, at one point or another, well, one point. A tough time in my life. I used to be all about that game, and you know, it's yeah. it's just funny, like seeing. I it. understand. Yeah. Uh, as an avid MMO player myself, on occasion, <laughs> if 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 Blizzard emailed me and it's like, listen, if you don't log on, we're gonna delete all your characters. You better believe I'd be right on there because my God, yeah, I've invested so much into the character, exactly, into the yeah. all that stuff, and like when MMOs die, I'm sad when those characters are gone. Like when the Matrix Online ended. I had a character in there that I very much cared about and looked dope and was cool and had Morpheus's outfit and was like, it was cool. And, and when the and when the servers kind of died, I was sad. The same goes for any MMO I've ever played that has kind of ended. Like, I don't, my characters yeah. are part of me. I put them in the world. I don't want them to, to die, you know, get to disappear forever. Yeah. Like, somebody should make a short animated film about what happens to your MMO characters after the game goes offline. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's an idea right there. It's kind of like, uh, what was it, like Wreck-It Ralph or something? Yeah, like, a little bit, a little like Wreck-It Ralph-ish. A L- little, little bit like that. 
Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So I did that because you know I wanted to save my characters and stuff, and it was and it was interesting logging on for the first time in forever. You know, like seeing all the all the old items and equipment and all the old shit that you know. There's so many like memories and nostalgia attached to all that shit. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was one of the things. And then finally, the big one, I beat Mass Effect two on stream. So we're done with that. You and, sure did. Uh, we're gonna be starting Mass Effect three tomorrow. Oh yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. Um. I um. Uh, the videos are for Mass Effect Two are going up on YouTube on, on my personal YouTube. So if you guys uh, are curious about that, uh, go and you know check it out because there's one uploading every day. Uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a hell of a game. It was a hell of a game. I'm 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 very excited to start three tomorrow, but I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. Cause at the end of one, I was like so hyped to get the two. But now after two, I'm like, well, shit. The way that things ended, I'm like, very curious where where stuff is gonna go. Like, I, I, I yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll we'll start that tomorrow. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, boy, Daniel, I'm gonna give you a tip. There's a DLC you need to do just as soon as you can in Mass Effect Three called From Ashes. You want to do that just as soon as you can. Trust me. All right. I'll try to keep uh, that in mind. <laughs> uh, it's funny because that's one of the DLCs that you want to do like immediately. Like in the others, it's like, save this toward the end. And this one is like, do this nearly at the start as soon as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're DLCs. I wish they were like more like. Yeah, it's it's, kinda, it's tough to weird. tell because like I'm playing these games and like I don't I can't sometimes I can't tell what is and what isn't DLC. So I'm just like, well. Yeah. I have these missions to do, so I'm just gonna go do this because I don't, yeah. I don't know, dude. Citadel, I know there's a their DLC in three called Citadel. You want to do that, not at the start. You want to do that almost at the end of the game. Uh, I know that for for your own awesome reasons. Just yeah, uh, but yeah, I uh, have completed. I completed. I also completed Mass Effect 2 yesterday. I finished my run and did all my DLCs um, and all that yesterday. Um, so the, my VODs are going up as well on my YouTube. They're, they're also here on, the, on, my, on my Twitch. Anybody's interested in seeing the Mass Effect runs. And boy, let me tell you, it was good to, it was good to go back to like my favorite of the Mass Effect series, uh, which is the two. The second one, yeah. It was good to see all those old characters again and talk with them again and and learn about them again. Um, it was a lot of fun, man. It really was. Um, yeah, it's always fun going back to a, a game that you love like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I also watched Atlantis Lost Empire. We already talked about it, but great movie. One of my absolute favorite movies. Um and Treasure Planet, which I think is severely underrated, actually. Uh, not enough people give that one a chance. Um, and really enjoyed that as well. Watching that with uh, you and Amber the other night. Yep. Um, uh, tomorrow is Pfizer shot number two for me. Oh, um, damn. That's not in what I've been up to the past weeks, but it is going to be a thing that's going to be coming up. Coming up, yeah. Um. Uh, I'm also supposed to start Mass Effect 3 tomorrow, but if the shot knocks me on my butt, which is also possible, uh, that may not happen. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so if you want to see that, come back to the channel. Uh, tomorrow evening. Probably. My shot's at like 7 in the morning, so that's going to be fun. Oh, man. Me, me who never sleeps at night and <laughs> sleeps in the daytime like a fucking vampire. Yeah, when, um, when I scheduled mine, it was always like 11 or 12, because I'm like, I ain't waking up early, dude. Fuck the that. the lady that was like, you, you just want to do a 7, get it out of the way? I was like, well, fuck it. Why not? Get it, get it. <laughs> that, that way, that way I'll come home and immediately fall back asleep. <laughs> Probably. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, that's all I've got. I haven't really been up to much this past week, really. Um... I haven't really watched any movies other than what we talked about, which is Atlantis and Lost Treasure Planet. I almost said Lost Treasure. Lost Treasure. Um, um, Atlantis, Treasure Planet. 
Right. Well, the crossover. Yeah. Um, and I really haven't played anything but Mass Effect. Um, I think I clocked in. I don't know if you looked at your save, but I looked at my save yesterday. I clocked in at like 39 hours played, I want to say, on my save. Mm. I think it was something like that. I didn't look at my um, save, but I can check something else to see how many hours I have in that or did in that one. I did like twenty seven. I don't know. That, that that that's probably not like like I I would leave the game open and take breaks and stuff. So I, that that's why I I don't like I don't count that. So mm-hmm. I would I would like like to like game game time is. Like twenty seven, almost twenty eight hours for me. Yeah, but I, but like, I also did but, scanning off stream because that's just not too much. So that kind of added up to. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, that's just for the second game. If we're counting both, and it's definitely longer than that for me. Oh yeah, for both games, I don't, uh, my Steam says like my sixty nine hours, and the only reason I said that's because it's at sixty nine. I thought that was funny. <laughs> N- nice. Let's see. Nice. We're, let's see. What does Steam say for mine? Steam says sixty hours. So there you go. There uh, did you like? Did you, and then we're not like going deep diving this, but did you like two more than one? Um, it's kind of weird because there's for me there's certain things I like in one more than two, but then there's certain things I like in two more than one. Like, like I don't know. There, there, there's stuff in both that I that I really like. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I got you. I got you. All right. Um, if that's all we want to chat about, let us move on into the news. And we have a bunch of trailers um, that I've put in here. Um, and the, I and there's some things that aren't in here that I'm going to look up when we get toward the end. So sure. first up, we have a trailer for No Man's Skies Prism. Um, no Man's Skies. Uh, no Man's Sky, rather, not Skies. Um, always does these little updates. But they've done like a complete visual over overhaul um, this past week, redoing lighting. They've made it so you can ride flying creatures now. That's pretty cool. Um, and make them pets. Um, man, what a story these guys have, right? Like, they went from people shitting on them, like, for overhyping their thing their game. Yeah. And and talking about what they wanted to do to like to me this is like the turnaround of the century, okay? Like CD <laughs> Project did the opposite of them with Cyberpunk, right? They went from very much loved anybody would do anything to for them to really shitty. These guys went from okay, you overhyped the shit out of this and now look at you. You're doing amazing. And like these guys it's it's crazy to me how much they they yeah. really care for their game and it really shows that they keep supporting it and doing these updates. Um I haven't really messed with No Man's Sky lately, but I wouldn't mind hopping back in after this update and checking it out when I have Same. time. I uh, I don't even have it installed, so I'd have to reinstall it and all that. Sandworm. Um that big ass worm. That's crazy. Yeah, no, no I actually like really like playing No Man's Sky. Like um I do too. Every- Every time I play it, I, I I play it in like spurts. Like I'll play it for a while, and then I'll stop playing it for a while, and then I'll play it again for a while, and then you know, like kind of like that. But it's it's a fun one, man. I I I I get into it. Like I I try to. I'm always like going to, to the spaceports and trying to buy a better ship than the one I got. You know, like all right, Mister Alien, what do mm-hmm. you have for sale? Do you have something better than what I got? Because if so, I'll gladly take that off your hands. But. I really um, like the idea of commanding a fleet, and you can command a fleet in that game, and they go out and do stuff. You send yeah. them on missions, and you get mission yeah, reports. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Um, so according to the info here, it says, Update 3.5 Prisms dramatically refreshes No Man's Sky's experience with a new, uh, with a range of new visual features and technologies. The universe has never looked better with reflections, new texture effects, more biome detail, improved lighting, New skies, new warp effects, and creature fur. That's cool, man. So they've added a lot to that. I would love to. You know what? I might. It's, that, you know, I might, that might be my offline game. You know, I've been trying to find something to play offline. Maybe No Man's Sky will be the thing. Yeah, man. Uh, when I'm not, not streaming. You're not give her, give her another not, go. 
You don't have to yeah. buy a game. You already got it, man. Yeah. Um, this past week, Warhammer, moving on, Warhammer had an event yeah. called Skulls, which I didn't, I didn't watch it live or anything like that, but I know they showed off, they showed off more than what I've put in the news because some of that stuff just looked not really for us, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or necessarily the people that watch this show. Um, but I did put in some trailers for things that I thought were cool. Um, so if you're curious about Skulls, you can you can search that out. But first up, we have a trailer for Total Warhammer 3 called Enter the World of Corn. Um, which, if you're playing this with sound, Corn is one of the chaos gods. Um, and if you've ever been in Discord with me, sometimes I'll say, uh, Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. That is for Corn. That is his. What if, they actually say it in the trailer. Um, and I, I was very happy when they did. Um, he looks like a Balrog, man. Yeah, he does. He's, uh, he definitely does. He's a fucking, these fucking army of demons. Um, this looks like some doom shit also. Yeah. Where's the um, doom guy, man? The doom slayer. I actually, I played the total Warhammer games. I like them. Blood for the blood god. For the skull throne. There it is. They um, said it in the trailer. Yeah, they did. And I am a uh, conquer your pretty, demons. I'm pretty excited for the this one, the third game to be put out because I think they're supposed to do like this big, like not three game campaign, but like it takes all the stuff from the old games, like one and two, and like makes it into like a gigantic, its own like big mega campaign thing. I'm like, I can't remember how they call it, what they call it, but um, that's pretty cool. Enter the world of corn with Total Warhammer 3. Uh, next up, we have a trailer for Warhammer Vermintide 2, uh, a new career called the Sister of Thorn. Uh, I haven't played much Vermintide. Daniel has played Vermintide. I, I do um, like playing Vermintide. I haven't played it in a little bit, but I do like playing it. Yeah, I, I have it installed. I, I, it's, it's a game that I like to jump back to every once in a while. It's just fun, you know, killing, killing rats and, and whatnot. Um, but, uh, yeah. The description for this says, by the way, before we show the trailer, it says the sister of Thorn is a new career for Karelia. Is that how you say her name? Something like that. Yeah. The, uh, um, the, the, the elf lady. Yeah. Yeah. It contains a new player career complete with new abilities, new weapon types, a new talent tree, a whole new skin, a new hat, new challenges, and in new voice lines, and this will be on PC. Oh, it's available now on PC, and it's coming to console on June 30th. Mm, okay. So this is already out there on the PC. I didn't realize that. Um, but we can we'll throw this trailer up for you. And um, so Vermintide takes place in the fantasy universe. But as I hear her talk in this trailer, she really makes she fucking sounds like an Eldar from the 40k. Part of Warhammer. Which I guess that's what Eldar are, basically elves in the 40k universe. Um. She got her, uh, got her green gluey stick here. Yeah. Makes me think, it's very druid, druid-like. Here in this trailer. What do we got? We got some, these boys... Is this Skaven? Is this the Rat Men? The Rat Men, indeed. Wait, these dudes. That looks like a Beast Man. He's got horns. Oh, that is a Beast Man. Oh, damn. Oh, I love cinematic trailers. They're so cool. Mm <laughs> hmm. Well, she's got black eyes, man. Damn. Damn. She seems to be like a druid, a druid knight thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, she's got a spear. Is a spear a thing in the Vermintide, Daniel? What are the weapon types that they use? Yeah, spear, um, new they weapons. Like, they got like uh, swords and 
uh there's like hammers i mean there's there's a bunch of there's i i think i think there might be a spear i don't know um i'm not sure if you can like throw it necessarily but i mean i think i think you can like have one and, and it, i don't know it, it depends okay. on the character as well that's cool okay so that's the sister of thorn career there for vermintide 2 a little quick trailer yeah Next up, we have Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters teaser trailer. This is just a teaser, so it's Demon it's really quick. Hunter. It's 50 seconds long. Okay. Um, it looked like something that would appeal to us. I think is why I put it in here, even though it's just a teaser. All good. And I think this is a. It's based on a older game, I think. Or something. I I'll have to read the description as soon as we're done watching the trailer. Um. Oh yes, 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 yes. This is the Grey Knight game where you play Grey Knights. Grey Knights are cool. Um. Just a quick little teaser. Coming twenty twenty two next year. Hmm. Full 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 cinematic trailer August 2021. August Oh, there's 2021. still more. Holy shit. Okay. There it is. Showing a little bit more in that trailer. Um Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is a turn it's a turn-based tactics game. Uh so that's right up my alley immediately. Uh it is a long-awaited sequel to 1998's Chaos Gate. Wow. It puts players in command of a squad of elite gray knights on a quest to rid the galaxy of chaos. Um, but yeah, that is, I think that is the end of the Warhammer stuff, the skull stuff that I put in here. Cool. Um, next, we have uh, the announcement of, how do you say this, pa Palea? Um, yeah, pa Palea, I, I believe. Palea, yeah. uh, which is this new chill. MMO and I think there's some uh it's funny how you're talking about Maple Story earlier and here we have a MMO uh trailer. Kinda, yeah. Um Um I think this is some ex Blizzard devs are working on this. I feel like I heard that. I don't know if that's hundred percent true, but I feel like I heard that. I might look it up after we're done with this. Um They uh they also have an alpha that you can sign up for and I have signed up for it. I have also signed up for it. So if you're if you are working on this game and see that we have signed up for it, by all means, invite Please. us immediately. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I would. I would be more than happy to uh, stream this game and play it, and you know, give my thoughts and all that stuff. Uh, but from what I've gathered, it's like just I don't even know if there's any combat in it. It's just very yeah, much it, chill, it, Stardew. Like, yeah, it looks like uh, a chill, cozy, nice. You build you up know, your little house, relaxing home. time, man. Yeah. Like with your friends, your homies. I mean, that'd be cool. Like, you know, yeah. like we already play Stardew and we play Stardew co-op. Like, this would be fun. Like building up your, you could build up yeah. your own little shire, you know? Like if they exactly. let you have houses be, next to each other. That would be so dope, right? Because you imagine that? Uh -huh. That'd be so cool. I'm, I'm all for that, man. That'd be dope. It just looks like a, just a chill. It's very chill, which is something that's. That we all need sometimes. So, yeah, I was gonna say, sometimes it's buddies. it's necessary to just play stuff like that. That lady does have a bow, but I I imagine she's hunting. Look, there's so there's babas. Um. Yeah. But yeah, uh, this is pretty cool. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more about it and learning about it. Free alpha starting soon. Sign up at Palea.com. People have been talking about that. I actually am going to look this up really quick because I am curious if it's ex-Blizzard devs because I feel like I heard that. Game. Ex-Blizzard slash Riot developers. Mm. So that is um, who is working on that. So those are people Absolutely. that kind of know what they're doing. So. Next up, we have a Chivalry 2 launch trailer. Normally, I probably wouldn't even put this in here, except that we played a bunch of Chivalry and had fun with it, and it launches tomorrow. So let's watch this trailer for it. Um, yeah, I, I had a good time with the uh, with the beta or whatever the hell it was that we were playing. 
Yeah, other than other than we could we had issues trying to form a party was like the only thing that really had a problem with. Yeah. Um which I hope they fix, to be honest. Yeah. So that if we all get this game like on a sale or something. I honestly, um, I mean, if if I might just wait till it gets on Steam, because like that the the not being able to the team up like is a huge like deterrent. Yeah. I mean, we were we were we tried a lot to fucking squad up, and it was a struggle, man. It was an absolute pain. Um, which I'm not sure if that was beta or if it's Epic Game Store because we've had issues with Epic Game Store trying to get with friends before with that. Yep. Um. Also, he kicked that dude in the fucking hole with one arm. Also, I don't remember seeing that map. Um. Uh, but we had a lot of fun playing this. Hmm. It, it was really and, fun. And you know. I don't know how long it would stay fun. I was starting to get kind of salty toward the end. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you played in spurts, man. Yeah, it is very much a spurt game. Uh, comes out tomorrow on the Epic Game Store, I guess. Yeah, because otherwise you, you you can get you can get pretty salty with that one. Like how, like how the fuck did that happen? Come on, man. Yeah. There's no way. There's no way. Uh. But yeah, no, it it, it was a good time. Um. Just one of those, uh, one of those things. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Um. Next, next up, we have uh the uh pushing back of uh God of War Ragnarok, which I uh, this is always o- obvious to me. Like there was mm-hmm. no game, there was no way that this game was coming out this year. Like if you if you legitimately thought this game was coming out this year, I'm sorry for you because that was never gonna happen. This game was never gonna come out this year. Like it's just like I don't care what anyone said. Like there's no way this game. Is gonna come out this year. So it, it, to me, this is a very common sense. Like duh, whatever you know. Of course, this is gonna happen. Move. Uh, Santa Monica Studio put out a tweet saying. Uh, since the release of the next God of War teaser last year, we've been humbled by the amount of love that our community has shown us. We're incredibly grateful to see so many people excited to experience the next chapter of Kratos and Atreus' journey. We remain focused on delivering a top-quality game while maintaining the safety and well-being of our team, creative partners, and families. With this in mind, we've made the decision to shift our release window to 2022. Thank you for all your continued support. We've got some exciting things in the works that we can't wait to show you Santa Monica Studio. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we all saw that kind of coming. Like, yeah, uh, I mean, like it, it, again, it was common sense to me. Like, like I, I don't know how you could not, I don't know how you would not expect this. Like, of course, it was gonna happen. Hmm. I saw some people on Twitter just to digress from this for a moment because it's Twitter, obviously, and people get on the internet and hide behind their screen and their fake names and are really just terrible to people online. Um, bro, if you're one of those people, get a fucking life and quit being horrible to people. Seriously. There's no reason to be shitty. <laughs> like, these people are working really hard on this. <laughs> but that's all I want to say on that. <laughs> Unless you have anything to add, Daniel. No, I mean, uh, yeah. And then, like, for the most part, Generally, giving games more time is a good idea. So yeah, I don't we know. We saw Cyberpunk. Before. Yeah, I mean that's that's. I mean, yeah, it's just one instance. Let them cook. It, like yeah, let them let them. I have no problem with with uh, letting these these guys take their time. A delayed game is eventually good. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I love the first game. Or the first of the newer God of War games, I should say, the 2018 one. Uh, so I'm definitely very much looking forward to Ragnarok. Um, Josh needs to play it so he can understand the greatness of God of War. But uh, but yeah, uh, um, again, it just it, it makes total sense. Like to me, this is not surprising in e- even a little bit. So yeah. All right. 
What is next? Bend the studio. Ah, uh, yes. I think I put this in here. Working um, they're working IP. on a new IP. Uh, Ben Studio tweeted out a little something. This was like uh, last Wednesday, so this was like right after last week's podcast because we did that on a Wednesday. Um, I mean a Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ben Studio put out a, a a statement here that says, "We are beyond grateful for your support with Days Gone, and are truly honored by the amount of passion our community has shared with us for our world and characters." Your enthusiasm, enthusiasm, most of the, uh, your enthusiasm, enthusiasm motivates us to continue to improve and create experiences that will last a lifetime. From the Siphon Filter series, which I loved, by the way, Siphon Filter, please bring it back. Um, to Resistance Retribution, to Uncharted Golden Aud Abyss, rather not Golden Odyssey, and Days Gone. We are very excited to announce that today that we are expanding the Ben Studio portfolio, portfolio with a brand new IP. We hope you embark on this new journey with us, and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on, Bend Studio. I know I know, some people were a little disappointed with the, that statement as they wanted a sequel, they wanted a Days Gone 2, and that could I, still possibly happen. But Shit, yeah, I, I'm all for Days Gone 2 as well. I, 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 I had fun with that game. Mm-hmm. And um, I need to play it. It's on my list. Uh, but I love Sam Witwer, and I know he's in Days Gone. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, he's he's the main he's the main character in uh in Days Gone. And he's talked about it. I've watched the streams. I've I've seen him play it a few times. Yeah. Um, uh, so I you know everybody seems to it seems to have a very passionate fan base. So I hope it does get a sequel. But this is something new, and I'm genuinely curious to see what comes next. Um, I wish they'd bring back Siphon Filter too, though. I don't, I don't know if you ever played those, Daniel, I, the old Siphon I, Filters. I, like a little bit, but not like never like a whole game from start to finish. I was hooked on them. They were kind of like, they were almost like James Bond spy type games. I want to say it's been a while since I played them. Like you're playing a special agent named Gabriel Logan, um, which is just sounds like Logan. a James Bond fucking name, um. And like you had gadgets and sniper rifles and like super, it was like a super spy stealth action kind of game. Uh, mm. I liked them. I loved them. So I hope they bring that back one day. Uh, but yeah, new IP from them. Um, next up, we have a breakdown. Oh, this this is going to be a little bit of a long one, guys, because there's a few things to go over with this. Um, a breakdown of game info and current game states from Xbox, PlayStation, and others. Some speculation and rumors are in here as well. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is... Um, so, uh, on Reddit, there's a subreddit uh, called uh, Gaming Leaks and Rumors. Don't go there unless you want to be spoiled on things. Um, but when I went there the other day, I, ch I check in here for news stuff occasionally, especially now because things are getting announced. Um, but somebody went through... Uh, Xbox, uh, did they do X? I think they did Xbox, they did Nintendo, and they did PlayStation, where they do like a, a comprehensive kind of breakdown of, of what the, their first party studios, their second party studios, deals, and rumors and types of things are. I thought with E3 and Summer Games Fest and all that kind of coming up, um, we could go over what they posted in here. This is uh, by yeah, the user good. named Sumino Vicious. I just want to shout them out because they did the work. Um, so we're starting off with PlayStation. So Sony, so Sony's the first party studios part says number one, the Santa Monica studio, pretty straightforward. We know they're working on God of War and based on a job listing, they're also working on some unannounced title. Some are speculating that it's a new sci-fi, uh, intellectual property, which, mm. uh, Corey Balrog wanted to make, uh, or Ooh. Balrog. How do you say his name? Bal uh, yeah. Corey, I want to Corey uh, Barlog, I believe. Barlog, that's it. Um, wanted to make even back in 2013, but it was canned because of production problems. They have one new IP and one established IP, which is God of War. So they have, they're have working on something new out of there, possibly some sci-fi oriented thing. Also, guys, just take these for a grain of salt. None of these, you know, it's all rumor and speculation, but it's fun to kind of go over it a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, uh, we have Guerrilla Games. We already know that they are well deep into the sequel of Horizon Zero Dawn, as they are recently yes. showcased Forbidden West. 
There are rumors flying around based on them hiring multiple persons who worked on Rainbow Six Seats that they are working on a tactical shooter game. Mm. People are speculating either Killzone, of course, and or SOCOM, which are two established. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I know that Killzone is the is the is from Guerrilla Games as well, so that one would make sense. Yeah, so I mean, it, it'd be interesting. I can't remember. I don't actually remember the last time I I like. It's been a while since I've heard of the SOCOM games, man. It's interesting that it's been a while since I've heard of the SOCOM games. But I remember. Do you remember watching G Four back in the day? And yeah, there was I like used a to watch show G4 all the time. There was a show on there called I don't even remember what it was called, but they would have like two teams would face off in certain games. And one of the games that they would play would be SOCOM. And I remember I'm playing like multiplayer of America's Army and all that stuff. And they would face off and who would win those fights would like win the show uh, kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And I just remember that's what that's like the first time I ever heard of fucking SOCOM. Um, uh, so it'd be kind of cool to see that, that SOCOM make a comeback. Um, but really, the odds, I put more money on Killzone because Killzone is... Very popular with folks. Next up, yeah. we have um, Insomniac Games. There's not much to say. They are releasing Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart next they, week. Yeah, or I this mean, week, they, I should say. I they guess, just then. did the Spider-Man Miles Morales for PS5 too. So uh-huh. it says here, and more than likely, they are deep in Spider-Man 2's development. So that is kind of all there is for Insomniac Games. Makes sense. Next, Next up, we have Naughty Dog uh, working hard on the multiplayer for The Last of Us 2 faction. So judging by their hiring spree in the last few months and the amount of time it took them, it's a safe bet that the scale of the project is quite considerable. We also know that uh, the inf- from the infamous Jason Schreier report that they are working on a The, the Last of Us 1 Last remake. Us, yeah. mm-hmm. So that's kind of all the info on there. So two games established intellectual property. Uh, that's cool for them. Uh, next up, we have Sucker Punch. They are probably working on a Ghost of Tsushima sequel. We know that they have been hiring people to work on a multiplayer project. Personally, uh, the the person in writing this write-up says, personally, I think this is just a, legend, a Legends mode for the sequel, which is like the uh, multiplayer, I believe. Yeah, uh, which, man, I, 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 which, man, that's so fun, dude. The, the yeah, we need to go Legends back. Legends mode for Tsushima. Yeah, we got to play that again because that thing was fun as hell, man. Uh yeah, also a Ghost of Tsushima sequel. Yes, please. Uh, I, I mean, love yeah. I love it so much. It's so good. It's so good. The first game was my game. Yeah, oh. Ghost of Tsushima's game of the year for me, twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Hell of a game. Same for me. Uh, Hell of a game. Uh, we just read the statement for Sony Band Studio, but here confirmed last night by Herman Hurst, they are working on a new open world IP, uh, which we just talked about. Uh. Polyphony. Oh, Sony uh, Bend. Yeah. Sony Bend. Yeah. Uh, Polyphony is working on Gran Turismo 7. Uh, Sony San Diego is working on MLB 2022. Um, Sony's London studio uh, has, based on uh, job listings on their website, seemingly they are working on a new multiplayer game. We don't know yet if it's based on an existing franchise or if this is a new title well, or if this type of... is a new thing. What's some of the stuff that they've done? Let me see. Some people are speculating the getaway and home two, but this is like a let's wait and see. Home two, like I, PlayStation I, Home. I have no idea, bro. Hold up, London Studio. Keep keep going. I'm I'm looking this up. All right. Uh, while you're looking that up. Oh uh, my god! It is. It is really. The, it is the PlayStation Home people, dude. Did you ever play PlayStation Home? No, I did not. <laughs> oh my god, bro! You, oh, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like, <laughs> oh man, what a time in the PlayStation world, man. Oh. <laughs> if you guys know what PlayStation Home is, you know. Like, if not, I, I, YouTube it, YouTube it. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a social game. That you would like hop on your your PlayStation and talk to other people, and it was that sounds horrible. I I mean I didn't uh, I didn't play it a whole lot, but I remember hopping on a few times and thinking it was it was interesting. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, yeah, it was it, 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 it's something, man. Holy shit, home too. That'd be nuts. Multiplayer game. 
Could be. And then Getaway. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, moving on, Pixel Opus, uh, Sony's my first uh, party studio, says they announced they announced last night, which this is a little bit of an old post, uh, that they are hiring for their upcoming game, one made in collaboration with Sony Animation. Uh, the person that is making this post speculates that it might be a new IP of some sort. Gotcha. Also, um, get away from the uh -huh. London studios of PS2 game. Gotcha. Uh, well, they're about uh, they're a little bit behind. <laughs> they're, they're a couple. They're a couple. <laughs> they're a couple gens, you know. Uh, um, the Asobi team. Well, they are more than likely working on a new Astrobot game. So I think Astrobot is like the new, like little thing that comes with the, like your PS5 mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um. So based on this information that the poster has tied together here, it seems like Sony's first party studios are working on a total number of about 16 projects. Or 11 or 12 of them are based on established pro franchises and three or four are on new intellectual properties. They have a few second party deals and external studios here that we'll go over. First up is Haven Studio. Uh, new intellectual property based on the experience Experience of the people working there, I'm expecting an open world AAA game with some light fantasy elements. Um, I don't know who Paven Studio is personally, but there you go. Um, Firewalk Studio is a bunch of Bungie veterans working on a new multiplayer shooter game, so it's also a new IP. Um, Blue Point, who we know have been, uh, I think they're they're the guys that did. They're the guys that did the Demon Souls remaster, right? So Haven Studios is the new Jade Raymond the uh, studio. Gotcha. Right? Is it the Mon the Montreal based studio? I think it is. Haven? Yeah, I think I remember. Haven. What I yeah, I think you're it. right. Yes, I think you are correct. Um. So that's that's the Jade Raymond one. So they are uh, what, what definitely you working on IP based on experience of the people working there. Open world AAA game. Yeah, I mean that. that I'm down for that. Yeah, I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Firewalk uh, Studio, Bungie Veterans, and Multiplayer Shooter Game. And yeah. that one I'm a little bit more yeah, about, you know. It depends uh, on what I have to wait and see what they what they come up with. But yeah. so Blue Point Blue Point is the people that did the Demon Souls remake. Okay. Uh we know they've been hiring for a new game, and my judgment leads me to believe they are working on a remake for another established PlayStation IP. Daniel, what do you think they could possibly be remaking? What what do you well, think? Knowing what we know that they did, um, Demon Souls. I mean, I w I would be inclined to think that they maybe would do another game in that series. However, I feel like they recently did the first Dark Souls like a couple years ago, right? So it can't be that one. I don't think. Yeah, there's do, a, I don't think there's it's a gonna... remaster. I think. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be those games anymore. If I had to guess, if we're thinking of another, if we're saying another PlayStation IP. Um, yeah, I don't know that uh, I have to, th I have to think maybe like, I'm trying to think of like all some of the older, like PlayStation games that haven't been around for years, maybe like, uh, like, like, like a twisted metal or something, you know, um, what's, what are, what are, what's something that hasn't been around for a long time? Cause Demon Souls was what? That's like a 2000 Shit, originally like 2009 maybe. Yeah, no, 2010. Okay, whatever. Close enough. Or 2009, 2010. One of those. Um. Oh man. What if they brought back Tenchu? Oh, that'd hey. be dope. I love hey, Tenchu. I I'm all for them bringing back some of these older games that people don't know about that were cool, you know? Mm-hmm. Was that so the I don't. Thing? I'm not really. I, I. I. I'm. I'm. I can't really think of one off the top of my head right now. But one of those older ones, I. I guess would be would. Any of those older ones would be nice. Also, I'm just taking a guess. I have no idea who owns the rights to what and what's able to be remade and what's not able to be remade. But yeah. man, I'm just like this would be great if you know Tenchu was a thing again. I. I like Tenchu. Um. Uh, 
Okay, uh, unfortunately, pretty much all the, this is all uh, pretty much all the info we have regarding external studios. So based on what I've put together here, the poster, not me personally, I didn't put this together. Uh, I have two. Uh, we have two games in development featuring new worlds and one based on established IP. So more or less, we know of 19 games that are in development. 12 or 13 of those are based on known franchises. And five or six on totally new universe. If indeed there are 27 games in development, then there are ga eight games that we have no clue about. And the majority of these games are going to be new IPs. But unfortunately, all of them are made by external studios. Isn't it crazy how people go through all this research and work to figure this out? It's kind of nuts. I'm glad they do, though, because it's fucking cool. And there's no way in hell I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm using their work and giving them the credit. Um... I'm actually gonna do Nintendo next, even though I have Xbox in the paper in the in the in the thing next. But the reason okay. I'm gonna do Nintendo next is because I don't think Daniel and I are either like super big Nintendo guys. Um, I'm like we like I play Nintendo stuff, but I'm not like a, yeah. I, I I I like Nintendo things, but like I I was more Nintendo when I was younger. Like now nowadays they don't have like a whole lot that I'm super crazy about. But I mean I do like uh -huh. them. Though. Um yeah. Uh, also, I also already went through the news. These I went through these before I put them in the news, and I was like, Nintendo seems kind of eh, so I want to get it out of the way now. Um, uh, this list was made by a different person, although inspired by the other guy. This one is by Anime Gaming Nerd on that same subreddit that I mentioned before. Uh, we're doing Nintendo, so the first uh, party studio is owned by Nintendo. So, um, starting with Nintendo EPD. Located internally within the Big N, which means Nintendo, obviously. And by far yeah. the largest studio, having dozens of teams, uh, it puts out multiple games. Their most recent game was Bowser's Fury portion of the 3D World Remaster. And their next release is Game Builder Garage, which is set to release this month. And in terms of projects in the far future, we know they are working on both Breath, Breath of the, the Wild, Wild 2, 2 yeah. and Splatoon 3. Right. Alongside updates for Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now as rumors now as for now as for the rumors, the biggest one right now is the three D Mario team at EPD is working on a new Donkey Kong. I have heard of this. I have heard that, that they are working on a new Donkey Kong game. Which they do have a link to the rumor here. Uh yeah. over on this in the life. But that's that leads to other news about yeah. There's a rumor of a new Donkey Kong coming. Which would be yeah. cool. I like Donkey Kong. Um um, another division of the EPD that we don't know much about right now is, is what the Mario Kart team is working on. Their last AAA game was ARMS back in 2017, and it's been four years, and last we heard from them, it was co-developing Mario Kart Tour. There have been rumors and speculation that their, li their next game will likely either be ARMS 2 or Mario Kart 9. So that is the Nintendo EPD. Uh, Mario Kart 9, studio. dude. They gotta do it. Yeah, it's probably about time, right? Yeah. Um, Definitely. So there's rumors of a new Switch coming out. You know, yeah. throw, out, throw out a new Mario Kart to go with that. Nintendo um, Software Technologies is the next one. Yeah. One of the only four first-party studios Nintendo owns that isn't located in Japan and once the home of Wave Race and 1080p snowboarding, uh, it became a Mario vs. Donkey Kong, uh, or sorry, it became a Mario vs. Donkey Kong factory during the DS slash Wii to the Wii U slash 3DS eras after some cancellation. Those things seem to be improving. They co-developed snipper clips, the stretchers, and good job, and have been given the job to port some of EPD's games like Mario Maker 1 to the 3DS, Captain Toad to the 3DS, and Switch, and recently did the 3D World Remaster. While they should be more than a port factory, it's still... Oh, God, there's somebody's giving a, an opinion in here. Uh, that makes it, uh... Get the feeling they will make a strong comeback with their own original game one day. Right now, there aren't much rumors about what their next project is. However, it should be noted, though, a producer on Wave Racer teased he would like to make a new one back in 2018. So maybe their big comeback is soon, sooner rather than later. Next up, we have NERD, which is, stands for Nintendo European Research and Development, located in Paris, France. NERD is yet, to re uh, is yet to make a fully original game on their own, but they do play an important role within Nintendo. 
as they made emulators for the GBA on Wii U, two, the two mini consoles, and SNES and NES emulator for the Switch Online, and the emulator for 3D All-Stars. They've done a good job at building Nintendo's uh, emulators, and most likely any future collection in the vein of 3D World or consoles added to Switch Online will be built by them. Uh, next up, Monolith Soft. Soft, uh, bleh, sorry. Uh, the biggest first-party studio out of EPD, best known for the Xenoblade uh, series. Xenoblade, okay. Which I haven't played any of those. I wouldn't mind checking them either. out. Um, <clears throat> their most recent game was Xenoblade Definitive Edition. But since that was a remaster, it likely wasn't made by the majority of the studio. Outside of that, their last major project was Xenoblade 2 back in 2017, and they are currently serve served as co-developer of Breath of the Wild 2, and job postings have indicated that they're also working on a big AAA JRPG. Uh, Nate Drake on Resteria has said that Monolith Soft will have a release by the end of the fiscal year, which ends March 31st, 2022. So an E3 reveal of their next project is very likely. So keep an eye out for something from them. Probably Xenoblade Chronicle, or Xenoblade 3, really. To be honest with you. Something, yeah. Um... Next up, and that is my NDQ. my uh, my uh, opinion. Uh, Indie Cube, best known for their recent Mario parties, their most recent work was Clubhouse Games, which released last year, and a recent update for Super Mario Party that added online root multiplayer. Rumors are ported, pointing toward a Super Mario Party Two being their ne next game, which should be out soon. Um, next up, we have Retro Studios. Currently developing Prime 4, their last project was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze back in 2014. Wow. It is unknown what they were working on after Donkey Kong and before Prime 4. It is especially unknown if said project will see the light of day. Next up, we have Next Level Games. Acquired by Nintendo just a few months ago, their most recent game was Luigi's Mansion 3. And there have been zero rumors about them, and since Luigi's Mansion released back in October of 2019... Chances are it will be another year or two before we see their next game, which will be their Frost first project since becoming a first party studio. Uh, oh, here's the, here's the one thing that's got me excited. Okay. Uh, Intelligent Systems. Their last two projects were the Fire Emblem Three Houses and Paper Mario the Origami King. Oh. Rumors are, porting toward, are pointing toward the next Fire Emblem being this year, and it being a remake, possibly, of the gene genealogy of the Holy War, which is, I don't know what the fuck that is. It was before my Fire Emblem time, but I love Fire Emblem Three Houses. It was great. So, <laughs> um, I'm not, I, I say I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. I fanboy the shit over some fucking Fire Emblem, <laughs> to be honest. So there you go. I'll tell you Josh is hyped about this. More, more Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. Uh... Next up, we have HAL Labs, best known for Kirby. It is heavily rumored that a 3D Kirby game is their next project, which will mark the little guy's first 3D uh, platformer. This is known due to a data mine of a Kirby spinoff released last year on the eShop and teases him from HAL that the next game will be at the start of a new beginning for the franchise. Mm. Remember, guys, a lot of this is rumors, so take it for grains of salt as we read it off. It may not be true. It may be true. We never really truly know until it's announced. Um, Game Freak. This is the most controversial studio on this list. Currently, their next big project is Pokemon's uh, Legends Ar Arceus. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, which is supposed to release in January. An interesting tidbit about HAL and Game Freak, though. Last year, both of them moved their offices to be internally within Nintendo. Seems pretty interesting, as while this isn't an acquisition, it seems that they will work on Nintendo closer than ever before, and will likely get more additional resources from this move as their next project seems to be the most ambitious for both studios. Bandai Namco and Koei Tecmo. Nintendo tends to outsource a lot of stuff to these two, and more collabs with them are in the future, basically. Um, so that is most of that stuff uh, for the Nintendo. There's some other stuff here in the comments, but I don't think there's anything in here really worth mentioning. Um, so let's move on to the Xbox, the Xbox one, which has quite a bit. And I think this is like the original. I think this is the thread that started them all, actually, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot here. 
Yeah, there's a ton. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this post is made by uh, Stavarasaraz on, on the subreddit, so I want to give him credit. Um, uh, uh, first off, we have... Wow, there's a lot in here. Holy shit. I told you, yeah. Uh, I was scrolling down to look at you, yeah. Um, and their their thing is uh, Halo Infinite. Oh man, the game I just cannot wait for. Let me tell exactly. you all about the, guess what, Halo. Josh, this this holiday season, man. I know you're looking forward to that. Oh also, man, apparently it has a ten year plan. Where did they say that? That this game has a ten year plan? Supposedly. Subsequent story content coming out in the years after release. That's nuts, dude. A ten year plan for this for a Halo game? That sounds let crazy. Me, let me let me tell you how just excited I am. I'm not at all excited about Halo. <laughs> and from the way they delayed the game, it didn't sound like it. I wasn't the only one, to be honest with you. Um, uh, so yeah, there uh, the three for three industries. We all know the studios all hands on decks for Halo Infinite, which is likely to be released this holiday season. It's been said that this game has a ten year plan, so there may be subsequent story content coming out in the years after release. I'm not sure where the ten year plan came from. I don't know if that yeah, was I mentioned somewhere. I don't know where that came from. I don't know. I'm gonna do a quick Google here just to see. 10 year plan Halo. That sounds Infinite. crazy though. Infinite. Yeah, there's multiple articles on gaming websites about them saying that they've had a 10 year plan for Halo. Well, good for them, I guess. I don't know how they plan on doing that, but hey. I don't know either. Uh, good for them. <clears throat> Next up, we have Compulsion Games. They're working on a new IP that is supposed to be a mix between Bioshock and Uncharted. That sounds mm -hmm. fucking cool, actually. Yeah, I was, um, that sounds <laughs> rad. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. That sounds cool, man. It is not yet revealed. When Phil Spencer was asked which new game he's most excited mm. for, he mentioned this one. I mean, it sounds exciting. Uncharted and Bioshock? That sounds cool, dude. Compulsion Games. What else have they made? I'm going to look them up real quick. Let's see what we have here. Oh, these are the We Happy Few guys. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Next up, we have Double Fine. The mind of Tim Schafer and his team are working on finishing up Psychonauts 2, which will launch on multiple platforms. The next-gen console version is likely to be an Xbox ecosystem exclusive. Ecosystem exclusive. <clears throat> they have also started working on a new unannounced IP, which we likely won't hear about for a couple of years. Mm. Now, here's something that's exciting. In Exile, these are the guys that make Wasteland and all those Wasteland 2 and Wasteland 3. And I think they just had some DLC come out, the Steel Town stuff. Um, in Exile, Brian Fargo has teased that the studio is working on multiple new RPGs. They are rumored to be working on an FPS RPG with a triple A budget. Hmm. Many people want this to be a new Fallout game, but I don't think that will happen. That's somebody saying this on the post. We know that the game will be made using UE5, so Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> the second game is unknown, but is in production as of January of this year. Since we know nothing about them, I'm going to assume one of them is a new IP and the other is based on an existing IP. Possibly another wasteland. Okay. Next up, we have uh, Mojang. Oh, this yeah, is the yeah, Minecraft yeah. studio, and they continue to update the main game with new game content, with new content as well as Minecraft Dungeons. However, they have also announced that they are playing with with ideas for brand new games. Mm. Seeing as they also released Minecraft Dungeons, I believe we can assume their new game will be a spinoff in the same universe and likely release on multiple platforms. Okay. Next up, we have Ninja Theory. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm having to breathe deep because I'm talking a lot. This uh, extremely efficient and talented studio is working on three separate projects. The first being the much-anticipated Cinema Saga Hellblade 2, which is being made in UE5. Their second project is Project Mara, likely a code name, which is a psychological thriller and is set in a photorealistic environment. Their third project is the Insight Project, which aims to create self-contained, individualized, and absorbing game experiences to help people control their fear and anxiety. Oh my god, I need that. Um, huh. That sounds like a series of shorter experiences, but it's anyone's guess as to what it ends up being at this point. It's also possible that it doesn't result in a game being released to the public. Hmm. Next up, Obsidian. 
Unbelievably, this studio is working on five different projects of varying five. sizes with a good oh. chance that almost all of them are RPGs considering the game's lineage. Chris Parker's team is focused on Avowed, which is a Skyrim-like open RPG, open world RPG. That, that one Adam, sounds cool, yeah. Yeah, uh, Avowed is the one that I think it's said in the um, Pillars of Eternity universe, if I remember right. Okay. I don't I think. I know we've seen um, like a trailer or something for it before. Yeah, we saw a trailer uh, like last year or something. Which or it looked, it looked pretty like neat. That. So that, that was something that was on my radar for sure. Definitely on mine as well. Um, Adam Brennick's Adam team Brennick's. is okay, yeah, working on Grounded. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the little, those are the yeah. guys working on Grounded. Um, okay. So they're continuing the work on that. Tim Kane's team is working on some a sort of new unannounced game. This may be Outer Worlds 2. I still have to play yeah. Outer Worlds 1, man. Mm -hmm. That game, that game uh, looks fun. I never finished it. Uh, I never I started. I don't even have it. I gotta get it, but it looks fun. Uh, Josh Sawyer's team is creating a new unannounced game. Brandon Adler's team is also creating a new unannounced game. The team is a complete workhorse for Xbox Game Studios in a similar way that Insomniac is that for PlayStation. So one established IP and four new IPs coming out of them. That's that crazy. is that's fucking nuts. Actually, yeah. like five, we're one studio making five fucking games. <coughs> Here you Ready. go, Josh. Playground games. I know you know you're looking forward to this one. Yes, uh, this this uh, playground games. This studio has two teams. One team working on Forza Horizon series, and will release will likely release the next installment, rumored to be set in Mexico, at the end of this year or at the beginning of next. The second team is working on a reboot of the wildly popular Fable series. There you two go. established IPs. Can somebody also make the movies too? Since we're bringing back Fable. Just I saying, mean, they uh, have all they, they have all these studios, man. They got they got to have one of them working on it, right? I know it's gonna happen one day. Uh, next up, we have the Coalition, the masters of the Unreal Engine. The studio is currently sharpening their blades with UE5 by making a new IP. Nothing is known about that game yet, but it's exciting to see such a talented team expand their horizons. They are work working on Gears of War 6. Um, well, I've never played the Gears of War, and I don't. I feel like it's too late for me to get on the train. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I, I, I didn't either. <laughs> that series just passed me by. I was a, I was a PlayStation guy when those games came out. Damn, and I I've think they were on the like Xbox. Games. So, um. Rare. Rare. This team continues to put work in the Sea of Thieves and are due for a big content drop. However, they also have a second team led by uh, Louise, Louise O'Connor O'Connor that is creating the game Everwild. What's that? Rare. I think oh. we saw a trailer for it. Didn't we see a trailer for this uh, last also, year? Also, I need Rare to work on another Conker's Bad Fur Day game. Yes. I suck at that. Uh, uh, Rare likes to create games that have never been made before, and that's why... Not much is known about this game yet. There is a rumored third game in the works, but I haven't been able to confirm info on that one one way or the other. Did we see a trailer for the Severwild thing last year? I think there is, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yes, I remember seeing that. Okay. Next up, we have The Initiative. This brand new team is composed of industry veterans from the likes of Sony Santa Monica, Rockstar, Insomniac, Crystal Dynamics, and Naughty Dog. Oh, I'm excited fuck. for this one. The the they're rebooting. They're rebooting Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. Yeah, that's yeah, right. This is your I, I this like, is your guy. Like Perfect Dark, man. Hell yeah, bro. Perfect. Bro, Dark they have dope. they have vets from all the good shit. I mean, they Hell have yeah, vets man. from Sony Santa Monica, from Rockstar, from Insomnia. That is like holy shit. Also, yeah, holy shit. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, little... those are like, yeah, all those names, all those those uh, studios you named off. That's a heck of a team right there, man. Yeah, hey, it's scary. Um, I'm uh, I'm excited for that, man. I'm very excited for the. They're uh, gonna make a work. monster. Um, turn ten. This team is rebooting the popular Forza Motorsport series, and they're also putting in work into Forza's tech engine, which is used to power all Forza's games as well as the new Fable. Uh, next up, Undead Labs, the makers of the first two State of the Decay games, are creating the third installment in the much-loved franchise, State of Decay 3. The new game will appear to be significantly more ambitious than its predecessor. Next up, we have World's Edge. This is a new team put together by Microsoft to foster the Age of Empires IP. 
They are overseeing the creation of a brand new entry in the long running series, Age of Empires 4. Next up, Bethesda Game Studios. This team, it's so crazy to me that Xbox owns Bethesda now. <laughs> um, yeah. Bethesda, this team is working on multiple projects from the mind of the great Todd Howard. I'm very the, interested in Starfield. The, yeah, that's the first one to be released will be Starfield. We'll probably see some of that, I imagine, at the Xbox Hopefully, Bethesda that, conference. That, that'd be cool to see. I'm, I'm very intrigued by that one, and I have been. Surely they're months. ready to show us a bit of it, right? Um, a sci-fi game that we don't know much about yet. It will be the first new IP from this legendary team in multiple decades. They are also working on the Elder Scrolls 6, which we probably will not see for a long time. Yeah, no, I mean it was teased what last year, but yeah, I mean no, nah, we're not we're not getting anything to that. All right, um, ID software. The original creators of the first person shooter are possibly possibly moving on from the Doom series, at least for now, and have begun working on a new game. It is unknown at this point whether the game will be a new IP or one from an existing franchise. Mm. It's also possible that it's a spin-off series in a Doom universe now that the Doom Slayer saga has come to an end. For the sake of this uh, for the sake of this exercise, we're going to assume that they will be working on a new IP, but it could go either way. Next up, Arcane Studios. This team is currently working on multiple projects, the first being the PS5 and PC timed exclusive Deathloop, which has been delayed to death. I added that in there. They did not say this. I added that in there. <laughs> which is being made by Arcane uh, Lion. Lion. The game will come to Xbox a year after its release on PlayStation. The second team in Austin is led by one of the leads of the Dishonored 2 game, Harvey Smith, as well as the staff members from both Dishonored and Prey series. It is rumored to be a fantasy game with vampires, but that is yet to be confirmed. Two new IPs. I will play a fantasy game with vampires. Um, cool. Next up, Tango Gameworks. This is the studio. The team that brought us uh, the Evil Within series is working on a new IP, Ghostwire Tokyo. We've seen trailers for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in Ghostwire Tokyo. It is, a it is a timed exclusive for PlayStation and will launch on PC day one and come to the Xbox a year later. So they're working on that. Next up, Machine Games. I know you're interested in this one, Daniel. This team is nearing completion wow. on what is likely but not confirmed a new Wolfenstein game. But they are also in early production on an Indiana Jones game. That's the one. I'm which very is produced in that. by Todd Howard. Uh, one established IP, one new IP. Indiana Jones was counted as a new IP due to it being a brand new game based on a movie series. Um, next up, Zenimax Online, the team that has brought uh, that developed massively uh, the massive Elder Scrolls Online MMO, continues to develop more content for the game. They're also working on multiple unannounced projects that we don't know much about. Two new IPs there. Alpha Dog and Roundhouse are next. They are two smaller studios that are making games that I got I know nothing about, so it's impossible to speculate. However, we hear more from them soon. Ah. Okay. Based on all that information, it seems like Xbox first party studios are working on a total number of 34 projects, 15 being games based on established franchises, and 19 on new IPs. Please keep in mind that these numbers could change once games start getting announced. Uh, next up, we have a few second-party deals. Xbox Publishing as well. Uh, Azobo, creators of A Plague's Tale. Oh, Plague's Tale's good. Good stuff. Yeah, I remember Bob playing it. I think I watched it quite. Um, this team is working towards releasing the newest flight simulator on console for the first time ever. So one established franchise for them. Uh, IO Interactive, creators of the Hitman series. The extremely This extremely talented studio is said to be in early production on a new AAA online multiplayer IP for Xbox. It is said to be codenamed Project Dragon, which may mean it is a fantasy game. One new IP for that. Next up, Avalanche Studios, creators of Just Cause and Mad Max. There is a rumor that Xbox has partnered with a studio to make a AAA multiplayer game that goes by the name Project Typhoon. I am reaching and assuming that it is developed by Avalanche. This may be totally wrong, and that's fine, but it seems to add up. Insiders have been dodgy when asked if this is the studio making the game. Hmm. Uh, next up, Imagine Inform, creators of the SteamWorld series. This team is currently working on the Gunk, which is an indefinite exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. Uh, please All note right. the possible time to Xbox exclusives such as Stalker 2. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, just some rumors and stuff. Cool, so, yeah, so that's all the Xbox stuff. 
Yeah, judging by the list, it's a total of 38 projects that we are aware of. 22 of those are new IP, and the other 16 are based off established franchises. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Xbox went mad picking up all these studios, man. They did. They are they no, were bringing no, they the games. Any, they have all these studios making all kinds <clears throat> of good stuff. I think they did a good job picking up Obsidian in particular because they're pretty uh, pretty ham. They're pretty, going pretty good. Bethesda. Getting um, Obsidian and in Exile are crazy yeah. to grab. You grab both of those guys. I mean, like everybody they've grabbed is nuts. Yeah, it's 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 crazy it's all the studios they picked up within the past several years. Like it's 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 bonkers. Um, also, I am interested in seeing more of the Fable, but I don't think we'll see anything this year. I'd be surprised. Yeah, probably Actually, not. not. All right, but let's move on cool. though, because we're still in the gaming news and we got a lot more stuff to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I am I am a little out of breath. Um what do we got next, Daniel? Uh we have the E3 2021 schedule as fan registration has opened up. All right. Um so the broadcast schedule information is unveiled as fans around the globe can now register free of cha- charge for the E3 2021 portal and app. Which includes virtual booths, forms, events, profile creation, gamification, and more. I'm not going to sign up for any of that. So um, we're going to head into the schedule here. It's Saturday, yeah. June 12th is the broadcast pre-show starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it'll kick off with a press conference with well, press conferences from both Ubisoft and Gearbox Entertainment, as well as a session with GamesBeat. Sunday, June 13th, the broadcast pre-show, 8.45 Pacific, 11.45 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Microsoft's long-awaited Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase will take place starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and they can you can also look forward to presentations from Square Enix, uh, the PC Gaming Show, and the Future Game Show. Uh, Warner Brothers Games, Back for Blood, and 24 Entertainment will also be uh, featured. Monday, June 14th, uh, broadcast pre-show starts at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, indie developers, uh, along with presentations for the Mythical Games, Freedom Games, Razer, and Capcom will take place, as well as a uh, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion panel discussion from Take Two Entertainment throughout the day. Uh, Verizon and Television will be featured, along with a session from v- from Ven. Uh, Tuesday, June fifteenth, uh, pre-show eight a.m. Pacific, eleven Eastern. And the last day E3 will include Nintendo's Nintendo Direct and Nintendo Treehouse Live, starting at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. Bandai Namco, Eureka Games, and GameSpot will also have focus events. And, of course, the show will round out with a, the official E3 2021 awards show. So that's the schedule again from June Saturday, June 12th to Tuesday, June 15th. So it's a four-day event. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday... There Very you go. Exciting. Get ready. That's that's pretty we soon. Have a lot man. of stuff to that's, talk uh, about. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's this weekend upcoming, man. So yeah, I'm yeah. excited. By next week's show, well, uh, this thing this thing will still be going on. Like we will, we'll, yeah. We'll have talked about some things, but not everything, because you know, it won't be over then. But yeah, that's that's the E3 schedule right there. Fuck yeah. Um, after that we have uh, what is this? A Marvel. <clears throat> Is uh, yes, a multiverse I put this in here. Tabletop RPG in 2022. Yeah. Um. So, uh, they're doing this new thing. Marvel is for their multiverse dealio. Um, I threw this in here because we love role playing games, and uh, they just announced this. So, uh, be part of the Marvel multi uh, multiverse coming next year. Marvel will release an all new role playing game, beginning with an introductory introductory playtest. Rule book that will put Marvel Universe in the hands of Marvel and tabletop RPG fans everywhere. Building on decades of thrilling characters and stories from Car- Marvel Comics, the Marvel Multiverse role playing game will unveil a thrilling glimpse into the full scope of the Marvel Multiverse. Players will finally be able to take on the roles of Marvel's most famous superheroes or create entirely new ones to fight some of the mo- most dangerous supervillains in the Marvel Universe. Um. Packed with illustrations from Marvel's amazing comic book artist, the playtest rulebook will include full profiles for fans to become their favorite Avengers, mutants, and other heroes, including Spider-Man, Black Panther, Captain America, Thor, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, Wolverine, Storm, and many more. 
It is written and co-designed by award-winning in New York Times best-selling author my, my, Matt, sorry, Matt Fortbeck, the Marvel Encyclopedia. He's worked on the Marvel Encyclopedia, Dungeons and Dragons, Endless Quest. Um, and they will introduce a new system, new dice system called the D616 system. Um, use might, agility, resilience, vigilance, ego, and logic to win the day and discover your true abilities as you face impossible odds. That's really cool. I like that you can like become Spider-Man if you want to. You could be Black Panther if you wanted to. You could be Captain America, Thor, all that stuff. You could take up those roles and tell those stories. I'm sure we'll be checking this out when it releases at some point in the future because we love superheroes. Of course, yeah. Um, this sounds pretty dope. Uh, I've you know ever since we did the uh, whole City of Mist thing, the the idea of doing a, a superhero RPG is pretty fun. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be keeping an eye on this one for sure. Yes, sir. Uh, that is all we have written down in the news. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition had an update uh, that is like eight gigabytes. Um, a lot of it is just the. It's, there's nothing really worth mentioning other than they've improved some performance. They fixed an issue that prevented players from reaching uh, max level in the original Mass Effect game, which we were already past that. Um, just yeah. a lot of, uh, just a lot of adjustment, just a lot of fixes. Really, is like the big thing there. Um, Nothing super worth mentioning, especially because my throat is dying. Um, uh, there are a couple of things that are not going to be at the Ubisoft Forward this year, though. Um, the Prince of Persia remake uh, put out a Twitter. Those guys put out a Twitter post uh, that says, Hello, Prince of Persia fans. Ubisoft Forward is around the corner, and we wanted to use this time to thank you for the amount of support you've shown us in the past year. As you might have already read, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time Remake will not be in Ubisoft Forward. We are making great progress for our game to release next year, but we are not ready to share any additional info just yet. We will share an update as soon as we are ready. Until then, we wanted to express our appreciation for your continuous support, as well as your patience with us on our journey. We are looking forward to the moment when we will be able to share more with you. So that's not going to be there. I, I know they're probably working their butts on it because they get a lot of feedback. When they showed it off uh, <laughs> last year. Another thing that's not going to be at Ubisoft Forward is going to be the Division. There will be no Division franchise mm. at Ubisoft this year. They also put out a statement on Twitter. Uh, a message from the Division teams. Agents, we won't be at Ubisoft Forward this year, but we invite you all to tune in alongside us to hear the exciting announcements across the other Ubisoft titles. The Division teams are still hard at work, New, uh, new content for the Division 2 is on track for the end of the year, while Heartland will have additional tests available for players interested in signing up. We look forward to sharing more when we can. Thank you, Tom Clancy's Division team. So no Division either! Um, Interesting. At UB Forward, which makes me so, wonder what so are they going to show? Really, this, this means they're finally going to make a Sam Fisher game again, right? I mean, come on. Could the, be. The, 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 the people want it. Come on, Ubisoft. Give the people what they want. I wouldn't be surprised. Give them that new Splinter Cell, man. Come on. Um, Rainbow Six uh, Quarantine has a new title. It is now hmm. going to be called Rainbow Six Extraction. They had a little uh, thing uh, um, video out there. It may, I guess it makes sense given the current state of things in real life that they right. would change the name. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think I, but to be honest, I think I like Quarantine better as a title than, than Extraction, uh, in my opinion. But I, but I understand why they would change. Yeah. Um, in Rainbow Six, uh, I'll read the little tidbit they have here. In Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly known as Rainbow Six Quarantine, assemble your team of operators to take on an always evolving alien threat. Just make sure that no one gets left behind. Tune in to Ubisoft Forward on June twelfth for the worldwide reveal. I actually kind of like Quarantine better too, especially yeah, after it, reading like it's aliens. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it with... just it just sounds better than than extraction, but I mean whatever, dude. Whatever. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I'm out of my voice is gone. <laughs> it's all good, man. We got plenty of other things to talk about. No, don't it's on it's on to you, Daniel. You're taking over the show. 
Uh, well, that's all yours, buddy. Uh, uh, we're going to move on to TV news, which is not a whole lot. We have a couple things here. Uh, let's see. First up, uh, why the last man series finally coming to FX and Hulu on or on Hulu in September. Uh, FX has been developing the added series adaptation of why the last man comics for a while. And the series is headed to FX on Hulu portal later this year. Uh, it'll premiere on Monday, September 13th, exclusively on Fox. Uh, season will include 10 episodes in total. And the first two will premiere on nine 13. Uh, based on the DC Comics series by Brian K. Vaughn and Pia Guerra, uh, published by Vertigo between 2002 and 2008, uh, Why the Last Man traverses a post-apocalyptic world in which a cataclysmic event has decimated every male mammal save for one lone human. The New World Order of Women will explore gender, race, class, and survival. Uh, Eliza Clark... Sh- from uh, Animal Kingdom, serves as the showrunner of the series, which has cast uh, Olivia Thoroughly, which was, who is awesome in uh, uh, Dread, if you guys haven't seen that movie, by the way. I actually don't think I've seen her in anything since. I don't think I have either. But she is fantastic in Dread. Uh, definitely check that out. But she's in this. Diane Lane, uh, Ashley Romans, a- Amber Tamblyn. Uh, ben Schnetzer. Uh, all the episodes this season will be directed by women, and the production has a significant number of female department heads, including both DPs and production designer, costume designer, ca- uh, casting director, editors, stunt coordinator, and more. Cool. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have some uh, Andor uh, news. Uh, you know, obviously the Rogue One spinoff series Andor from you know Disney Plus, Star Wars. Uh, Chernobyl and his Dark Materials actor Robert Ems has joined the cast of Andor. Uh, the the action adventure series obviously focuses on Cassian Andor's character from before Rogue One. Uh, he is joining the uh, cast with uh, Diego Luna, Adria Arjona, Denise Go, Genevieve O'Reilly, Seven Skarsgård, Fiona Shaw, and Kyle Soller. Uh, Toby Haynes is the lead director on the tall episode first season, which is lead, which is due to launch in uh, 2022. Uh, ben Karen and or Karan and Susanna White will also direct episodes. Writers include Stephen Schiff and Tony Gilroy. Filming is due to wrap this summer. Um, and then we have our first look images at Jensen Ackles' character in The Boys season three. Uh, he will be playing the character known as Soldier Boy, not to be confused with uh, Soldier Boy, who <laughs> had the famous uh, hit song, uh, you know, uh, Soldier Boy Tell Him or Kiss Me Through the Phone. Uh, this is Soldier Boy, not Soldier Boy. But uh, yeah, Jensen Ackles' character, they have, they have first look images. I think he looks pretty badass, to be honest. Yeah. He's got kind of like a Captain America look to him with the shield and the, you know, the star in the middle. He's, he's Obviously, rocking your color, bro. Yeah, he's rocking That's the a... green. So I'm, I'm all about it. He's, <laughs> it looks like it's green, red and kind of like a not like a gold, but maybe like a bronze or something. Uh, I think he looks cool. So, yeah. I'm, His, uh... Uh, I'm looking at this symbol here on the shoulder. It looks like a oh, I was trying to zoom in, but let me zoom in. Um. It looks kind of like a a symbol from like a, a real time strategy game, you know, like a you pick your faction mm. and the symbol pops up. It looks yeah. it reminds me of something like from Dune or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I could see that, yeah. Uh, and there's also another picture of the shield, I believe, that uh, Jensen posted on his Instagram, which is which again looks looks pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I uh, I lo- I love the boys. The show, uh, season one and season two, are both great. Can't wait to watch season three with this new character in it. Look, looking forward to seeing what this guy's all about. Uh, and again, I like the look. The gear is cool. The the color scheme is cool. The shield is pretty dope. So yeah, I'm 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 all for it. 
Hell yeah. So let's let's give us the boys season three, man. I'm ready. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for our uh, for our TV news. Pretty quick. There's not a whole lot this week, but um, yeah, we can move on now to the movie news, which will probably uh, we'll probably go through really quickly here as well. Yeah. Um. So let's get started on that. First thing we have here is uh, we have Patty Jenkins talking a little bit about Rogue Squadron, you know, the Star Wars movie she's working on. Uh, uh, the Rogue Squadron movie has added Wonder Woman production designer Aline Bonetto to uh, their production. Um, and then we have a quote from Patty Jenkins in addition to this where she states, uh, in the Rogue Star Wars Rogue Squadron movie, we're doing something original with great influence from the games and the books. There's lots of things being acknowledged and understood about the greatness of all those things, but yes, it's an original story and I'm so psyched to do it. Um, now the reason why I put this in here, because I think it's pretty exciting that she said that they're taking influence from the games and the books. Cause I really enjoyed uh -huh. playing the rogue squadron games. Obviously, it's a story that she's been wanting to tell. It's an original story. We know this because I know, um, I think she was either inspired to or or influenced to do this because of her father, who was like a pilot in real life. Um, so I'm sure that it'll have something to do with that. But I, of course, you're gonna have, you know, you gotta have influence from the games and the books if you're gonna do something like this. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. I'm very glad. I like Patty Jenkins. I loved Wonder Woman one more, way more than I did two. But I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm I, I, I think she's a great director, and uh, I'm excited to see what she does with this. Me, me too. I um, I think when we talked last week about the future of Star Wars, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Rogue Squadron was pretty high on my excitement. Yeah. Uh, list. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. Um, Next up, we have Donnie Yen joining Keanu Reeves and John Wick 4. This is cool because, uh, you know, you got Ip oh, Man. Oh, Donnie Yen, bro. Ip Man, a.k.a., uh, you know, uh, Chirrut Imwe from Rogue One. Going to be joining uh, the John Wick franchise for the fourth movie. Uh, Donnie will, Yanni Yen will play an old friend of Keanu's uh, character, John Wick, who shares his same history and many of, of the same enemies. Uh, so that is pretty exciting. Uh, Chad Stileski, who is the director, uh, had a, was quoted as saying, we are very lucky to have Donnie Yen join the franchise. I'm looking forward to working with him in this exciting new role. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, there's another quote uh, from uh, uh, the producer, Basil uh, Iwan Iwanek, who says, uh, Donnie Yen will bring a vibrant and powerful energy to the franchise. We're determined to bring him on board to John Wick 4 and are thrilled for the opportunity to have such a major talent to collaborate with Keanu. So that's cool. I like both these guys. It's going to be fun to see them in a movie together like that. And a type of movie like that. So that's... That's always it's always a good time. Donnie Yen is a fucking that fucking badass. <laughs> like it's gonna be. I look forward to watching him whoop some ass again. Yeah. Hell yeah. Next up on the news, we have uh, Jonathan Majors' major talks to join Michael B. Jordan and MGM's Creed Three. Uh, so Jonathan Majors is the, uh, main character from Lovecraft Country. He's also going to be in the new, in the, in the MCU, uh, playing Kang the Conqueror, I believe in the, uh, Ant, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, th third movie. Um, so yeah, he's in talks to join Creed three. Um, 
he he's pretty good from what I've seen and stuff. Like I like like I, I've I haven't seen all of Lovecraft, but I've seen some of it, and he was pretty good in that. Um. So yeah, man. Like he's 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 starting to get himself in in other projects. Uh, I personally, this may surprise some people, but I have I have not seen any of the uh, Creed movies yet. Um, I feel like seen the first well, one. I like the first I, one. I think I would I. I need to like rewatch the Rocky movies before I can start the Creed movies. I feel like you know, retro so, rewatch. So that's the reason why I haven't started the Creed movies because I feel like I have to rewatch the the Rocky ones. But then, like, there's so many Rocky movies, so it's like you know, oh, God, it's a, so it's, many. It's a whole process, which is why I haven't seen the Creed ones. But I'll do it eventually. I I I've, I I heard they're good and stuff, but I you know I just. Haven't gotten to them, but I'll, I'll I'll watch them at some point. But I just I feel I I feel like I need to rewatch the the Rocky ones. But anyway, next up, we have some Spider Verse two news. Uh, Issa Rae is joining the sequel uh, as she has been cast as Spider Woman. Uh, actor, writer, producer, director, Issa Rae can now add superhero to her resume. Uh, she is joining Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse as Jessica Drew, a.k.a. Spider-Woman, uh, for the sequel. And she's joining Shamika Moore as Miles Morales, Haley, Stanf- uh, Haley Stanfield as uh, Gwen Stacy. Uh, and then we know, we, I know we talked about, uh, I believe, like a month ago or a couple months ago, uh, that Spider-Verse 2 is going to, you know, they have their three three directors for this movie. Uh, along with Phil Lord and Chris Miller, you know, uh, producing. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited uh, for Spider Verse Two because I really I love the first one. Um, Issa Rae's cool, so I'm, um, you know, we'll see what she does with Spider Woman. Um, and yeah, I mean that's just cool. We're we're getting Spider Woman in the sequel, you know, like that's that's awesome. I can't wait. I'm excited. Um, I really love Spider Verse. I would argue that it's like a one of the best movies, uh, superhero movies out there. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have a Master and Commander movie in the works at 20th Century. Uh, they're looking to head back to the high seas as they develop a new Master and Commander movie with uh, Patrick Ness adapting the script. Uh, insiders say it's still early days and no director or talent is attached. Uh, the original Master and Commander, Far Side of the World, was a 2003 movie directed by Peter Weir uh, set during the Nap- uh, Napoleonic Wars. It follows Captain Jack Aubrey, also Crow's character. A brash British captain who pushes his ship and crew to the limits in pursuit of a formidable French war vessel around South America. Paul Benny also starred. Um, that's cool. I heard that they... This is not in this article that I'm reading, but I heard that this is going to be like a prequel or something. Yeah, I think so. Is that what you've, yeah, is that what you've also heard I was going to say? Well, at the top of this deadline article, it actually says uh, Patrick Ness pinning prequel, so I assume that's, that's what oh. it is. Uh, okay. Uh, but it doesn't say it anywhere else in here. It's yeah, literally nah. in the title and then like nowhere else. So I assume I'm assuming freak. Yeah. Uh, so there, there we go. So yeah, it is. Uh, they're working on a prequel for it. Okay. They don't, they don't say it anywhere else in the article. Really. Also, I've never seen the movie. I never saw the original one. Uh, I, 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 I've seen like parts of it. I've never seen it from start to finish, so I have to, I have check to do it that because I hear it's a good movie. So, yeah, gotta, gotta check it out. Funny, I, I, I sent it to, that. to, uh, our, our friend Curry and Thacker, both of them. Oh yeah, uh, Curry, Curry's all about that movie. He's all about that movie. He loves Master and Commander, and I sent it to him, and he was just DMing me back, and it was really funny. He was sending me the "I don't need it" SpongeBob meme, and like <laughs> it was just really funny. I just I thought I'd throw it. that on there. That's I don't need it. Yeah. They cracked me up. Uh, what's next? Uh, next up, a third Quiet Place movie has been dated for 2023. 
I haven't even so, seen the first one yet. A Quiet Place Two just came out, uh, and they're already working on a third one. Yeah, Josh, you gotta watch the first one, man. I have it. I bought it because the, two, the it. second one's out now. The, the first one's been out. Like they're working on a third one now. Like you... I'm falling behind. I'm 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 excited to watch the second one. I haven't seen it yet, but I hear good things, which is great because I enjoyed the first one uh, quite a bit. Uh. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to uh to a third one. Um let's see, what do they have here? After a strong opening weekend for Quiet Place 2, Paramount has dated a third entry for the horror franchise for March 31st, 2023. Uh Bud director Jeff Nichols will take over from John Krasinski, uh, with a story based on an idea by Krasinski. Nichols handed in the script for the new installment, which is more of a spin-off than a threequel, just days ago. Krasinski told uh Rotten Tomatoes is Eric Davis. Uh, Michael Bay, uh, Andrew Form, Brad Fuller, and Krasinski are producing with Allison Seeger executive producing. Uh, okay, yeah, the rest of it is just box office stuff. But yeah, so yeah, I, I, I would, uh, I would recommend checking out the first one, and then yeah, because uh, it, it, the the first movie was is, is is like really good. Like I I really enjoyed it for sure. Um. Uh, because like I didn't know anything about it when I first went into it, like checking it out. But I, I ended up really like it was one of those like pleasant surprises for me. I was like, oh, this is actually a really really fun movie. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check that one out when you can, Josh, because it's good stuff. Will do. Uh, The Matrix Four has added Christina Ritchie to an already impressive cast. So. Uh, we have Keanu Reeves, of course, as Neo. Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity. Jada Pickett Smith, Daniel Bernard, Lambert Wilson, uh, along with Yaha Abdul Mateen II, uh, Jessica Henwick, Neil Patrick Harris, Priyanka Chopra, Jonathan Groff, and now Christina Ritchie. This movie's building up quite the cast, man. It's stacked. Like I, I haven't seen any of the uh, Matrix movies recently other than the first one but like the the cast that they're building up here is honestly kind of getting me a little a little like making me look forward to this because i'm definitely interested in it they got some names in it man like i'm like all right that's i'm I, I, I'm, I like I'm interested in it here. because i also played the matrix online and i'm genuinely curious like because that that mmo right had like a little bit of a story yeah. to it and i'm genuinely curious to see if there's like Maybe maybe they picked up a storyline or two from it and put it in a movie. You know what I mean? Like, I'm curious. I'm curious. Uh, to see where they go with it. Uh, this movie intrigues me. I'm a little... I'm not going to say excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see what they do with it. I'm, I'm, in, I'm definitely intrigued, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. The cast is, 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 is definitely, uh, you know, making it sound pretty pretty good but we'll see you know there's been movies with great casts before and they've been disappointing that's true to say the realize, least i didn't realize but, neil patrick yeah. harris was in this movie until you yeah, until i was looking at the list here i like jessica uh, henwick she's cool oh i love i love jessica henwick man mm-hmm. i love that woman but anyway uh yeah it's a solid cast so far uh, so Cru- Cruella, the Disney movie, just released also, but they're already working on a sequel, mm. which is nuts. Cause like I, th- I don't even like it. May twenty eighth, so it's been out for like a little over a week now. Uh, at the time of this recording, but like they're already working on the on on a sequel for it. It's an early development. Uh, Corella director Craig Gillespie and uh, screenwriter Tony McNamara are expected to return uh, with Emma Stone as the the fan favorite 101 Dalmatians villainess Cruella de Vil. Uh, Cruella debuted on May 28th uh, simultaneously in theaters and on Disney Plus for the premium access uh, for the th- extra $30. Um, uh, it's been reviewed positively. 
and has been praised for its 1970s punk rock aesthetic. Mm. Uh, so far, in this, at the time of this article's posting, which is a couple days ago, it's earned 48.5 million globally. I'm sure that's increased since then. Mm -hmm. um, but a Disney uh, spokesperson said in a statement, "We are very pleased with Cruella's box office success in conjunction with its strong Disney Plus premiere access performance to date." The film has been incredibly well received by audiences around the world with a 97% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, in addition to A's in every demographic from Cinema Score on opening weekend, ranking it amongst the most popular of our live action reimaginings. We look forward to a long run as audiences continue to enjoy this fantastic film. So I haven't seen this yet. Uh, I will be checking it out, of course, because, you know, uh, why not? Uh, I like watching new movies. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll watch this, but uh, I, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I do for sure. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, interesting, interesting. I, I, I honestly did not expect. I mean, I, not that I thought this movie was going to do bad, but like, I, I didn't. I guess I didn't expect for it to be doing as well as it is. I don't know. Hmm. That's cool, though. I mean, good for them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the last piece of movie news that I have here is this one is a little bit more of a, I would say, uh, maybe take this one with a grain of salt, maybe more of a rumor, because I am not sure how reliable this source is, but they're claiming this is an exclusive and other places have ran with it as well. But uh, they are claiming that Namor has been cast in Black Panther 2, a.k.a. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Tana Cuerta has been cast as Namor. And apparently they are, there's also an intriguing Atlantean supporting cast reveal as well. Um, so they're, they've cast a Mayan woman named Zayana and a Mayan man called Kadamel. Uh... The casting includes indicates that all actors of North and South American indigenous backgrounds will be considered for the roles. Uh, they are important characters. These these people that these Mayan warriors that they're casting are important characters in Namor and Atlantean lore. Uh, Zanaya is a codename for Namora, Namor's cousin, while Katamel is a codename for Atuma, an Atlantean warlord. Um, uh, so. This is cool, but also because I, I, you know, I, I was expecting them to go with Namor for Black Panther 2. The only unfortunate thing about this is that we're not going to get to see T'Challa against uh, Namor, which is yeah. like a thing I know from the comics and stuff that they're like pretty, you know, because, you know, unfortunately, the passing of Chadwick Boseman and, you know, they're not going to they're not going to recast T'Challa. So, you know, that's. It's it's unfortunate because I would have really liked to have seen T'Challa go up against uh, Namor, but you know that there's you know bigger, you know things and in, in, in life than that. But you know it is what it is. Uh, I I think it's cool though that we were that we are will be getting Namor. I wonder, I wonder if they're gonna set up Namor and 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 some of that other stuff in um in like Eternals or something. You know what I mean? I have no fucking clue. We'll have to wait and see, but I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. I'm, I'm excited for Namor. Um, same. That would be really, really cool. Um, yeah. I, uh, the actor who they have cast, or they, they're saying they claiming has been cast as a, a Namor is not in a whole lot of stuff. He's in Narcos, I think. Is like he's in Narcos, like uh, he's in a lot of Spanish stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, he was in Spectre, the James Bond movie, which I haven't seen yet. Uh, but they credit him as Mexican man in Lift. So great. Uh, yeah, he's just a <laughs> he's he's a background character. He's a background. He's in, guy, he's in that Get the Gringo Mel Gibson movie. He's in Days of Grace, some of his more well known ones. Sin Sin Nombre. Yeah, so he hasn't been in a bunch of stuff. And yeah, like you said, he is in Narcos Mexico, so that's that's cool. But uh yeah, I mean cool. I mean yeah, why not? Yeah. That'd be that'd be that'd be dope. Uh mm -hmm. but yeah, that's that's all the movie news we have for now. Uh 
And that's the news, ladies that'll, and gentlemen. That'll do it, my friend. That'll Whew. do it. Uh, do we need a break, or you want to roll on into the second part? No, I mean, if you're good, I can. Uh, I don't. I don't think the second part will be very long. Uh, but yeah, we, we probably won't be going. Let's roll into it then. All right, yeah, guys, we're oh. into the second part of the show. We did a retro rewatch for Von Ryan's Express. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched it last night. You watched it last night. I did indeed. You've seen it before. It's my first time seeing it. I have seen it before. It's been a long time since I have seen it. But yeah, I uh, I have seen it before. And uh, it's a 1965 uh, Frank Sinatra flick. Um, It's been a while since I've seen it, of course, like I just said. Josh watched it for the first time. So, Josh, I'm curious. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Was I did it like it. I did like it. Um, okay. Um. Uh, I'm not gonna say it was predictable, but I knew it was gonna end the way it ended. Okay. Um, I was I was gonna I was gonna ask because uh, uh, s- s- spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of warning here. I mean, if if you haven't seen the movie, I mean, I come on, like, you, you know, you know, the, guys. you know the title of the episode. Come on. This this movie is as old as my old man. <laughs> Uh, anyway, at the end of the movie, Sinatra doesn't make it out. Yeah, uh, he does. He's, he 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 uh, he they, they they take him down, but everybody else makes it out. So I was gonna say, like, it's interesting that you said that you knew how that was gonna end because I was gonna ask you, like, did you expect Sinatra to die? Like, you know, because you know, I he's the main he's the main guy. I suspected it after he shot the girl, and they kind of set him up with this like little bit of guilt thing. This need for redemption kind of thing, feeling toward it. Um, And I just got, I kind of got the feeling that like everything toward the end of the movie just keeps, keeps like slowing them down, slowing them down, slowing them down. I'm like, I know somebody's going to have to die. Um, A part of me is like, well, it's pretty gutsy for him to, to kill off Sinatra, right? That's, he's like the star of the movie. He's like your big name to sell the movie. But the whole vibe I got through it is like, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna, he's gonna get gunned down in the end, and that's exactly what happens. He gets gunned down at the end. The movie ends with the train pulling away, uh, uh, going off to the uh, uh, Switzerland, and the camera kind of lingers as everybody kind of watches his body laying there in the, on the yeah. tracks. And I'm like, first I thought, okay, yeah, I kind of saw that coming, but then I also thought it's pretty ballsy to kill Sinatra in a movie. Because he's much beloved in this time yeah. period, right? Yeah, like... dude. 1965. Yeah, dude. Like, the, he's, um, he's the, the main dude. He's, he's he's the big American walking into the POW camp being like, I'm an American. I do whatever the fuck I want. You know? Uh, I'm the ranking British, officer. Fuck the British. <laughs> I, I, I'm coming in here doing what I want. All you guys got to listen to me. Because guess what? America, goddammit. I did like the movie. I got some Bridge Over the River Kwai vibe from it. A little bit with all the the Brits, um, yeah. uh, kind of being a little bullheaded and stuff at point at points in the in the movie. Wow. But yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot actually. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Sinatra is great. He was good. Um, man, yeah. Also, when they started searching the train cabin, I am after they take it over, I immediately knew I like I know there's a woman gonna be in one of those cabins. Yeah. And the moment they open the yeah. door, of course, it's a gorgeous lady there. I just fucking do. Of knew. course, some, some <laughs> it was going to be some, some beautiful Italian woman just laying yeah. in bed with a, with a dress on. Like, oh, of course, here we go. It's funny because when we were watching that, Bigfoot was like, oh, that's that's Sinatra's love interest. Here we go. You know. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. I'm, I'm more surprised at her getting shot. In the movie than I am at him getting shot in the movie. And especially because he's the one that guns her down. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the, your big main star, your big hero, right? He guns down this defenseless Italian woman, even though she's running away, uh, mm. screaming, going to give them away. Uh, he guns her down because he has no choice. Like, yeah. um, Which I'd forgotten that he was the one that shot her down because I thought it was like the British dude, but it's like, wait, that doesn't make sense because the British dude shot the other guy and he was Mm -hmm. on the other side of the train, so it can't be him. Yeah, so it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, Sinatra is the one that does it. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, 
I thought that was an interesting, like, little dark moment that I yeah didn't expect. Um, and they like zoom in on her on the steps, and she's like dying and stuff. Dying, you're like, Damn. yeah. And you're like, like you're like, Damn. focuses. And then not only that, on it. <laughs> but you see the little kid looking at these guys. Yeah, because like, before like, before this, we we didn't even talk about this before that. They stop the train, and they're in disguise in their full Nazi outfits and shit. So the people of of you know the Italians think these fuckers are still not they're, they're nazis and shit so they're like you know f- you know giving them shit and like you know saying all kinds of stuff and and and, and these guys are like man if only they knew you know but you know we, we can't like they couldn't give themselves away but then then there's a kid that walks up and sees you know the woman running away and he sees her get shot by sinatra who he thinks is a fucking nazi so Mm-hmm. You see the kid like man, it's 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 a pretty intense moment that one for sure. Yeah, it is. Um, I uh, after a movie's over, I'll often go look at the trivia, and I did for this. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently, Sinatra is the one that wanted the ending for he died because he didn't want to do sequels. Because uh, mm-hmm. apparently, the book this is based on the his character lives. Uh, so oh. Sinatra is the reason that Sinatra dies. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I remember, I remember, yeah, that that they were supposed to have an alternate ending, yeah. And then speaking of the trivia, one of those POW dudes was an actual real POW in World War II. Yeah, he spent he spent five years in a in a German, uh, you know, POW camp, and he's like, you know what, I, I, I'll do it in a movie. Fuck it, I, yeah. I did it in real life. What, what, what I can live, worse than I this? live this shit, bro. Like... Yeah. He's like, he's like, I'll bring, I'll bring the authenticity and realism to this movie, cause I lived this for five years. Damn it. Uh, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. What'd you think of the train stuff? Cause you know, obviously they use like, you know, Italian trains, and at the end it of was the movie, cool. they, they they thank everybody for that stuff. Yeah. There's not like a lot of, uh, I don't know how many war movies there are where they they involve trains, but this one is like almost a good, at least a good. 75% of the movie they're mm-hmm. on this train. Um it's I, I like it's a war movie but I think of it more as kind of like a an escape like uh yeah, adventure it's like movie, a, you the know. The great escape, yeah, kind of yeah. in a way, yeah. Um yeah. where they're they're trying to get a, uh, away. Um Also, the dude, one of those the doctor, the priest Priest, I was like, yeah. I was like, what's young Michael Caine doing in this movie? Because that's what he looks like. He looks like young Michael Caine. He looks like a few guys when he's younger, but <laughs> you know who that is? He's the dude from he's the dude from Knight Rider. If you ever watched Knight Rider, oh bro, I can't remember. He's he's the he's the British dude from that. Like I was because he looks like a couple British guys when they were younger, and I was like, I was like, who is this guy? I was like, oh, that's who that is. Like, oh damn. But yeah, he, yeah. What you think of him? He, he he spoke pretty good German, and you know he he, he pulled off the, you know the the whole Nazi ruse yeah. pretty, pretty well. Then huh? he comes back to the train car and passes out. He faints. And he passes out. You're like, come on, bro. <laughs> come on, man. You just did this. Why, why, why are you fainting? Yeah. Come You're on. supposed it's, to be a man of God. You're supposed to have faith. <laughs> it's, more, it's it's uh, it's just somewhere that like '60s cheesy humor that they have in this movie. Mm-hmm. Which like, this movie also, is a little funny. They have a lot of little comedies in here. Yeah, there's a lot of funky like like the the music like when they're in the fucking like burning the clothes in the camp and like. Oh know, my god, like, they're doing... naked. Oh there's yeah. booty in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they're they're it's it's a it's a silly movie, but it, it's fun. I I I I I like it. <clears throat> uh, overall, liked it a lot. Um, I pro- I'll probably watch it again sometime. You know, I'm a, I, uh, it's not like one of those one and done movies for me. I enjoyed it enough to watch it multiple times, probably. Mm-hmm. Now you, uh, always, the, you can do whatever. Yeah. The, the cast was great. Um, yeah, all the like uh, supporting characters and everything were, were pretty. One good. of the what one of the seven think? from the Magnificent Sevens in this movie. What did you think of the relationship between uh, Von Ryan, or you know, or or, or you know, Sinatra's character, yeah, and uh, and the Italian officer dude Oriani? Oh, I thought it was cool. Um, I I thought it showed like how a lot of um, uh, Italian um, 
army uh, characters uh, or characters, people weren't like fully down with the Nazis, you know, weren't mm-hmm. down with like Mussolini yeah. and all that shit in World War Two. So um, uh, I, I kind of like how uh, Frank Sinatra's character has faith in that character, not betraying them. Uh, and giving him a chance, whereas the uh, the uh, uh, British officers like he probably sold us out, that bastard. You know, like yeah. he's such a grumpy. The major, major, uh, uh, the, the English have, dude, yeah, yeah, the English major or whatever. He's a grumpy dude. Pinch him. Uh, yeah. Um, and I was like, they'll probably end up being friends at the end of this movie, and then Sinatra gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the movie. <laughs> I mean, hey. Like you say, you didn't want to do those sequels, man. Yeah, and then, uh I did like uh um how the major comes to Sinatra's character Ryan later and says, I'm sorry it had to be you that, that gunned her down. You know, because he's like because yeah. he's like he's like more cold blooded about it. Like he's like, yeah, I, I mean, can do it and not remember like, there's a there's a point when he's like trying to use the you know the, the rope to like you know take the guards on he's like if you can't do it i will you know and yeah he's, 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 he's ready to go for it man like he's like uh what was it uh he puts knots in it he's like nuts knots will crush their larynx and yeah. knee will break their back and i'm like this dude's cold-blooded <laughs> he's hardcore man yeah exactly mm-hmm. um uh but yeah i find it very interesting how uh like i'm like it's it does really good of building that tension of are they gonna get away? Are they not gonna get away? Uh here they're having to bluff their way through the station. Here they're being bombed by their own British uh Air Force or American Air Force. I can't remember if it's the British or Americans that are bombing. This just ran they just happen to get bombed by them. And then at the end the Luftwaffe is shooting rockets at the fucking train oh, and, yeah. and yeah. like it's there's so much that goes on that tries to stop them, and they just they don't give yeah. up. So, what'd you think uh, of, like the, of, the of the movie. Gestapo dude, like eyeing him, and he's like, he just want he all he wanted was the watch. <laughs> was the watch? He yeah. just wanted the fucking watch. I was like, fuck me, really? And then I was like, so not so not Ryan's over here like negotiating. You want these nylons? He's like trying to give him these nylons. He's like, because mm, mm, they don't speak German, so he's just shaking yeah, he his head. He's- and he's looking at the priest the whole time. The priest is like, please, just fucking yeah, let him. Yeah, giving him, giving him signals. <laughs> it's so good, uh, yeah. Um, like, please, let him just take it. It's a moment uh, of uh, of uh, comedy uh, when you yeah. expect him to be, because it's the Gestapo, when he just yeah. wants the fucking watch to trade you for it. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Um Uh, what else? Um, I know I've seen at least one of these characters in The Great Escape. Uh, Probably. I think it was uh, the one that gets killed in the train car by the Von oh. Kleist or whatever the fuck his by, name is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's in The Great Escape. I was like, I recognize him. I think he's from mm. The Great Escape. And I was right. Because okay. he is from The Great Escape. I was looking him up. Uh, he plays Willie Tunnel King. Uh, in the Great Escape. Cool. Uh, whereas in this, uh, he doesn't. I don't think he hardly talks in this one. Uh, he has a little bit, but yeah, not not a whole lot. Uh, but yeah, I like the movie. Um, I do think uh, Ryan should have let the major uh kill but Batag Bataglia Bataglia. How do you say the name? The the commandant of the camp at the beginning. Uh, yeah. The, that, that guy, I was like, man, he should just let him shoot him instead of throwing him in the sweat box. He's like, throw him in the sweat box to rot. I was and like, they've got to come back to this guy. There. I was like, they got to come back to this guy and kill him later, right? That's what's going to happen toward the end of this movie at first, I thought. I was like, because here he is at the door giving him a, sal- a Nazi salute. Uh, I'm like, is he going to come back? Somehow they're going to end up killing this dude, right? Because he's kind of like almost like a little mini villain. I know you never see him again after that. Um, this went on his way. Yep. Uh, uh, um, the Nazis killing the wounded made me think of uh, 
Oh man, they just gunned him down. Then they gunned him down after they get him on the train. I was like, fuck. I was like, uh, uh, they've done that in a few movies and real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can say on the movie. I mean, overall, I just liked it. I was a, I was a fan. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a solid, fun, silly little, you know, adventure escape war movie. You know, uh-huh. with with Sinatra. You know, like that's that's your that's your guy that you're following. And uh, yeah, you know, he gets shot down. He gets uh, taken to the the POW camp, and you know, he tries to lead these guys out of there while trying to, you know, uh, gain the support of the British dudes. And you know, they all got to work together to hijack the train and convince the Nazis with the help of the priest that they're, you know, they had that Heil Hitler, you know? Yeah. My favorite so. part, my, I say my, I think my favorite part is when they first take over the train where he's like, get them out, get them up on the top of the thing. And then they all jump down and, and jump the guards and beat the fuck out of them. Yeah. I love that part. When they do that, I was like, fuck yeah, I kicked the shit out of those Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> they, and, and they sure did. They sure uh-huh. did. I was like, they're all oh, those Nazis are so outnumbered. <laughs> uh, I just, I just think it's funny how like when they're leaving the camp, they're trying to sneak around with like all these dudes. It's so many fucking guys, man. It's Could like four hundred dudes or something. Trying crazy to shit, like, yeah. like escape and es- like, not escort, but like just trying to like sneak around and escape with all these fucking guys. Like that's so many dudes to try to sneak around with. Yeah. Like, they needed that train. Otherwise, dude, I don't know how the fuck they would have got out of there. You just have to go your separate ways at that point, because there's no way you can all scavenge enough food and water and all that without, like, some way. There's just too many of you, right? Like, Yeah, there's there's so many. Uh, But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was cool. It was cool seeing a, a prison escape train movie. Uh, Absolutely fun it's just a fun movie you know yeah also i I, usually in world war ii movies you always see like the nazi germans here you got to kind of see the uh italian kind of uh, fascist nazis a little Mm -hmm. bit more um uh, than what i'm used to uh so yeah i don't know what else to say on it um it made money at the box office. I'll tell you that, because it had a budget of five million and they made like seventeen million, which is for not for that time period. That's quite a lot of money. Pretty, that's quite uh, a lot of money even by today's standards. But that's definitely a lot pretty of money. highly rated on. Uh, um, what's it? Um, Rotten Tomatoes. If that means anything to anyone. Mm-hmm. I know Frank Sinatra's portrayal was very highly praised as uh, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was nominated for uh, three Oscars and it won one. Best sound editing is what it won. Um, uh, hell yeah! If you haven't seen Von Ryan's Express and yeah, you like like World sure. War Two war movies, give it a, give it a check out because it's a pretty enjoyable about two hours movie. I think it is two hours. It's like a yeah, it's like a little less than two hours, something like, like that. Like an hour and fifty-eight minutes or something like that, yeah. I think. Also, I love fucking Sinatra's jacket in this movie, dude. It's great. That brown one that he oh, has. Oh, yeah. You you mean the jacket that they also use in Hogan's Heroes? Because it's apparently yes. the exact same jacket. <laughs> yes, that that jacket. <laughs> I read that in trivia. I was like, the leather Whoops. jacket. That is a cool ass jacket, dude. I it like is a cool one. jacket. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to get me a jacket like that. I want one, man. That shit's too too cool. Also, I just want to say I love the old style movie posters. I want to put it up right here. Oh yeah. I I love these old style movie posters like this right here. Like this is great stuff. Yeah, look at that. Classic old. Trying school. to get on the like that's pretty much the end of the movie right there. <laughs> like uh, that somebody's put up there. Uh, what a. What a what a fun uh, time checking that out. Yes, sir. Good, good stuff. Um, yeah, that's uh, 
That's Von our Ryan's retro Express rewind. Man. Yeah, Von Ryan's Express. Well, uh, what did uh, what did Bigfoot and Amber have to say about it? Did they say anything worth mentioning here on the show? I about just the movie? I just found it funny because Bigfoot was just talking shit about Sinatra's character the entire movie. Like <laughs> Bigfoot was on the was on Fincham's side the whole movie. It was, it was well, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice, yeah. I think Amber and <laughs> liked it enough as well. Um, but yeah, it was just funny w- watching it with the. Uh, with them um yeah so that that's that's the movie uh or, or that's the the retro rewind for this this uh this time around all right guys uh, that's next time it. around josh will choose the next one because and i got a few favorite. in mind too and i'm like what the uh, fuck i got a few the, in my head that i'm like what can we watch next the time? next one will not be n- next month but the month after that so the next one will be in august i believe Yes, I believe so. so you have yeah, you, you have plenty of time to pick out your your um for for your for yours. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you all, all right. for joining us here on today's episode. Let's do our goodbyes. I'll throw you up first, Daniel. Here you are. Uh, hello, hello. Uh. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Clockwork Cantina podcast. Um, we will be doing, uh, or we'll be talking about some of our favorite movie protagonists next week. So, so stay, you know, stay tuned for that because that's that's the next one. Uh, and I will be starting Mass Effect Three on my channel tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. I'm, ex- I'm I'm looking forward to it. We're, we're going to be... It's the beginning of the end. We're almost done with Mass Effect, which is kind of crazy to think about because we're almost there, man. We're two games in. We're starting the third one tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to seeing where our journey takes us with these characters and the story. And, you know, we we got to stop the Reapers because they're... Because, oh, Lord, they're coming. Uh, oh, Lord, they're coming. Oh, Lord, they're coming. Uh, what else? Uh... Yeah, I guess I guess that's that that's that's pretty much it. You know, keep an eye out for all the the discords and the Instagrams, the Twitters, and all that stuff. We'll, we'll be around. Um, yeah, like I said, see you guys next week for the next one. Uh, have a good one. Bye bye. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for everybody showing up and showing your uh, support here uh, for the cantina. We appreciate everybody that shows up and hangs out with us and talks in the chat when you can. Uh, Coming up, I have my second Pfizer shot tomorrow. I highly recommend you all get vaccinated as well and wear your mask everywhere you go and take care of each other. Um, Until we get through this, which we're we're rapidly getting there, I think. Um, I may also start Mass Effect 3 tomorrow as well. We'll see. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling after the, the shot. Uh, if I don't have it, it don't have it. But it, it, it be what it be. Um, so make sure to come by for that stuff. Make sure to come by for all the future shows. And if you like what you've seen, hit those follow buttons, subscribe buttons, leave comments, all that stuff. Uh, we appreciate, we appreciate any little bit we can do. Podcast is on the Spotify as well, so if you... Want to listen to us, and instead of seeing us, you can do that as well. And I think that's going to do it for the show, guys. Uh, Much love, appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.